to witness the 2017 International Leaders Conference with the theme Stand Firm in the Faith anchored from 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verses 13 to 14 which reads Be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong Your every act should be done in love This theme was announced by our CFC Chairman Brother Joe Tale together with the other members of the International Council last September According to Brother Joe the theme was a call for members of the community to stand firm in the midst of the many attacks against family, marriages, and faith by doing everything with love. 14,000 members of Couples for Christ will be attending this year's conference. An increase in the number of participants in last year's Rejoice, Pray, and Give Thanks Leaders Conference. Let us tell more about this year's conference. Here is our correspondent, Cha Lauchenko. Cha? Take. 
Pambi. Shikari Moho and I am Maya Tolentino and you are watching Evangelium, the CFC Global News, the International Leaders Conference Special. We are live here at Mall of Asia Arena to witness the 2017 International Leaders Conference with the theme Stand Firm in the Faith, anchored from 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verses 13 to 14, which reads, Be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. Your every act should be done in love. This theme was announced by our CFC Chairman, Brother Joe Talet, together with other members of the International Council last September. According to Brother Joe, the theme was a call for members of the community to stand firm in the midst of many attacks against family, marriage, and faith by doing everything with love. 14,000 members of Couples for Christ will be attending this year's conference. An increase in the number of participants in the last year's Rejoice, Pray, and Give Thanks Leaders Conference. To tell us more about this year's conference, here is our correspondent, Cha Lauchenko. Cha?
full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Thy death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O, o my Jesus, Jesus forgive, forgive us our sins, sins. Save, save us from, from the fires of hell, of hell and lead all souls, souls into heaven, especially those who most need of thy mercy. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us to have recourse to the fifth joyful mystery is the finding of Jesus in the temple. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sin trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my, my Jesus, Jesus forgive, forgive us our, our sins. sins. Save, Save us from, from the, the fires, fires of, of hell. hell. And lead all souls, souls into, into heaven, heaven, especially those who most need of thy mercy. O Mary, conceived without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. Hail, Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, sweetness and our hope. To you do we cry, for banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn the most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our son, Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy to the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, o God whose so only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant we beseech thee, meditating upon these mysteries of the most, of the most holy, holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. Amen. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. Thank you. Magandang buhay. Thank you, Sister Cynthia and Lorna, for leading us in praying the rosary. And now, let us prepare ourselves for the Holy Mass. Again, may we request everyone to please settle down and put their cell phones into silent mode. May we request everyone to please settle down and please put your cell phones into silent mode. Thank you.
Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Kindly settle down as we would be starting in, the, in a few minutes for the Holy Eucharist. Again, kindly please settle down. We will be starting the celebration of the Holy Eucharist in a few minutes. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, and we welcome you to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist this Saturday of the first week in Ordinary Time. Presiding our Eucharistic celebration is His Excellency, Most Reverend Ramon C. Argelias, Archbishop of Lipa, together with the following clergy from the foreign and local missions, Father Quezon A. Juan from the Diocese of Bayombo, Nueva Vizcaya, Father Carlos Santos, OFM from Tel Aviv, Israel, Father Marco Coloma from Ecuador, South America, Father Ronald Magbanua from Mongolia, Father Anthony Layo from Lingayen, Dagupan, Father Bruno Henilia from the Diocese of Tagum Davao, and with Monsignor Allen Aganon from St. James Parish. Please all rise as we sing our entrance hymn.
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit. I'm sure during the Holy Rosary, we are all focused on the image in our monitor. We see there Mary at the foot of the cross. Today is Saturday. We want to be with Mary as we prepare to encounter Christ on Sunday. We will encounter Him nevertheless today in this Eucharist and in every Eucharist. And we must always remember that when we celebrate the Mass, we are brought to Calvary. Calvary is brought to us. And there, we are accompanied or we are accompanying the Holy Mother suffering with her son for the whole world. And we listen to Christ telling her, Behold your son. Saint John was, the, was present there in our name. Now we are all there. That's why we should listen to Jesus telling his mother, the mother of God, Behold your children. And to us, he says, Behold your mother. And it is the hundredth year of the apparition in Fatima. It is good to heed the call first of St. John Paul II, who tells us probably or the events of Fatima is among the greatest that happened in our times for the church. And with Benedict XVI, we will, we will reflect how what she said in Fatima is not yet fully accomplished. What does he mean? We have to reflect on that. Maybe we have not heeded her request enough to save the world by praying with her. Today, we would like to invite you to be really close to her, the greatest mother. And our Mass is a, in honor of Mary, mother of the church. And we can also say Mary, who is the church, our mother. Because you are being embraced by the church. And you are one of the most important elements in the building of the church, also of the future. Because the church is a family rooted on the family which are called to renew by the power of the Holy Spirit. In that context, let us offer this Mass and be truly united to Christ. And remember, Mary is there. And we would like to be the communion of communions, of communities that the Church in the Philippines looking forward for the fifth centenary of our being Christianized or the start of Christianization is reflecting today, this year. And let us understand what that communion of communities really signify. Let us prepare ourselves truly to celebrate the Mass in the right spirit by acknowledging, first of all, that we need God's forgiveness. We need His mercy. And we need also to forgive and bring His mercy to others. Let us acknowledge our unworthiness but at the same time, let us with great joy proclaim the merciful love of God for us. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us, let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, whose only begotten Son, as He hung upon the cross, chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, to be our mother also. Grant, we pray, that with her loving help, 
your church may be more fruitful day by day and exulting in the holiness of her children may draw to her embrace all the families of the peoples through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen kindly be seated for the liturgy of the word A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The Word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflection and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from Him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. Since we have a great high priest who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So, let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, our response is, Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Please repeat. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Response. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The percepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Response. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Response. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, response. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Please all rise as we honor the Holy Gospel. Oh, 
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went along the sea. All the crowd came to him and taught them. As he passed by, he saw Levi, son of Alpheus, sitting in the customs pose. Jesus said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed Jesus. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners sat with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. Some of the scribes who were Pharisees saw that Jesus was eating with sin sinners and tax collectors and said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard this and said to them, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing as the bishop will bless us with the book of the Gospel. Please all be seated for the homily. The members of the International Council, is that all right? Do you call yourself that? My dear brothers in the Holy Priesthood, dear elders, leaders of the different CFC communities, dear seminarians, sisters, and our companions in the beautiful celebration of our worship this afternoon, brothers and sisters in the Lord. I realize that we are here for a leadership conference. Maybe before listening to any conference, including the homily, please ask yourself, you are here because you are leaders. Why? What is the meaning of being leaders? Because sometimes that is the cause of the division. Everybody wants to be a leader. If only we know leadership in the Christian sense is leading. Leading others towards a goal. Now it is good for us to know what goal is that? And maybe I can volunteer, and I surely will insist on my opinion. Our leadership is leading others, by example, of course, to Christ. You can forget all other descriptions of leadership, this kind of leadership that we are here assembled for, is leading to Christ. Which means also leading to heaven. You know, I'm surprised that uh, in many communities, not just lay communities, covenanted communities, that you are one of them. You know. But even uh, in faith communities, Protestant, Catholic, or otherwise, we are happy to be together, but we don't know the ultimate purpose of being together. Maybe it is always good to remind each other, if we gather together like today, our purpose is God. And that means our purpose is eternity. And we will find deeper meaning in what we are doing and in our life if we know that we have a very important and very unique and very clear destination, purpose in life. 
and that is to be with God. And Jesus is the way, the only way. And our way to Jesus is to be together. As we gathered together in this leadership conference here in this uh, country, and I'm do I don't say and I don't say proudly that we are the only predominantly Catholic country in this part of the world where the least number of Catholics can be found, or even Christians. No, in this continent, so few are Christians, and yet the great number of Christians in Asia are Filipinos. And sometimes we are proud of that. We must, if ever we will be proud of it, we must be proud that we are called to do something great. We have a destiny, and that is to make, to lead other Asians to Christ, to lead them to the real purpose why we are people, why we are created, to lead them to the unity of God's family, to lead them to heaven, we can start building that heaven here on earth, but it will not end here on earth. That is why we are leaders. And we, should, we will be humiliated by the fact that uh, we are tasked with a great mission. The mission of proclaiming the good news. According to Pope, Pope Francis, when he visited the Philippines, in 2015 to visit the poor, especially those who were victims of the calamities, the typhoon Yolanda, Hainan. He said, you are the bearers of the joy of the good news to the continent of Asia and maybe to the whole world. When he spoke to us through internet, at the end of the, the concluding mass of the 51st International Eucharistic Congress a year ago, January 2016, he said again, but with a slight difference, you, Filipinos, are the bearers of the joy of the good news to all Asia and the whole world. He removed the word maybe or perhaps no longer that adverb is expressed in his statement. And when we are here, coming from all over, together with our friends who, to whom you have introduced the couples for Christ in different nations, and we, I see even among priests, we have people from Ecuador and from Tel Aviv and from Mongolia and from Manila. No. <laughs> from here, from everywhere. And I think there are so many others because in the previous years, I could see leaders from Papua New Guinea and Africa and different parts of Asia, everywhere. I think even before this, the Holy Father challenged us to be the bearers of the good news to Asia and the whole world, you were already doing it. You were already called, you had already answered the call of the Spirit precisely to renew the families in the entire world by the Spirit. What a wonderful work. What a wonderful challenge. And when we forget that, then our leadership has no meaning. It only leads to division. We must never forget that. The Philippines, preparing for the fifth centenary of the first coming of the seed of faith in these islands, scheduled this year, 2017, as the year of communion of communities. Communion of communities. I was very much uh, disappointed when uh, even in the tarpaulin announcing that, I see that they have created this as the year of the Paris communion of communities. There's nothing wrong with that, except that at times, when we look at parish, we are thinking of the priest who is lording over the rest of the community. They cannot move without him. That's not the church. That is the remnant of the Roman Empire. You know, the, in, the, in the beginning of, the, of Christianity, 
really the gospel was meant to be spread to all the Roman Empire. So Peter and Paul died in Rome because they had as objective Rome and from Rome to the ends of the earth at that time what they know about the earth. Maybe for them the, the end of the earth is the Iberian Peninsula. No? They did not have yet in, uh, concept of the New World, America, and maybe even our islands no? because they thought that the world was flat. No? And then they succeeded in Christianizing Rome. And the Christianity, after three years of per 300 years of persecution, became widespread in the known world at that time, the Mediterranean Basin. And that is now what is called Christian Europe, which is now being called the Christianizing Europe. What is unfortunate is instead of Christianizing the Roman Empire, Christianity was Romanized. We follow the structure of the Roman Empire. That is why we see as the equal with the emperor, the pope, and the bishops are uh, powerful nobilities, and the priests are little kingpins. No? It became a little bit unchurchy in the right sense. It became Christendom and not Christianity. I was very happy when uh, in discussing about this uh, nine years of preparation for uh, the first mass and the first baptism in the Philippines in 1521. This year is made to be a reflection on the communion of communities. Why is the church one? The church is one because we are a communion. That's why we are here in the mass. You know the Anglicans, our separated breath, brethren are not completely wrong. The Anglicans called the Mass Holy Communion. The whole celebration is Holy Communion. It is a communion of those who are made holy. Who makes holy? Oftentimes in the parish, the priest is not the one who makes holy. And we become like the priest, little despots in our little communities, even in the family. The one who makes holy is the Son of God who became man. That is what we remember these days. We still feel the atmosphere of that, in, especially in, our, in this country, where Christmas ends with the celebration of the infant Jesus, the Almighty God who created everything, without whom nothing is created, the one who is always with God because He's God, became a child, born of the Virgin. And then, how wonderful it is that Already at this time when we are recalling the wonderful mystery of God made man, he's being a child, weak and yet the strongest because he's the owner of everything, the creator of everything. We already recall the Nazarene. We celebrate the suffering Christ because they are always together. And indeed, that is the God who made himself who made himself the recipient of the curse of our sins in order to make us holy and pure and great and able to enter his divinity. Who is the source of communion? Christ. Who is the greatest sign of communion with Christ? His mother. They are never separated. They can never be separated. The mother is so whose only life is, to, is consecrated to her son, whom she adored as a little child. She is the only mother who adored her own child in Bethlehem and who shared the sacrifice for all humanity on Calvary. She is always there. She will always be there until, the, until glory. And she is honored by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in heaven. And she is our mother, and we are meant to be honored by God by cleansing us of all our impurities, of our sinfulness, removing from us the curse due to our iniquities and making us God's children. She symbolizes all of us. That's why at the foot of the cross, the one who became mother of the Son of God 
in the beginning of the realization of God's plan, became also the mother of all those who will become God's children at the fulfillment of God's plan on Calvary. And that fulfillment is being done now. And we are a communion. The whole family of God in the entire world and even in the whole human history has become one. Just as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. The family is meant to be one. The family of humanity is meant to be one in God. That is what we are aiming after. And it cannot be achieved without suffering of the cross. That's why we, are, we again and again enter into the mystery of our salvation, which can be found only on, the, on Calvary and beyond Calvary is heaven. The whole family across history and in the whole wide world now is united because of Christ. The only body of Christ which we are in communion with. When we receive Holy Communion, we say we receive the body of Christ. That's not exactly wrong. But what is more right is to say we are received into the body of Christ. We become one body, one life, one bread, one church, one community, one family because of Christ. Christ is the source of unity. The whole church is also complete in every diocese which is called the local church because Christ is there. And all of us are one body with Him, one life. Our humanity has been lifted up in His, in his divinity. Still, Christ is the center of that communion. It's the source of that unity. We go down farther and we call it parish because it is territorial. But it's not really, it, has, it doesn't have to be territorial. It has to be spiritual, mystical. A parish is united and good to God. It will be united especially when the priest really symbolizes Christ. He makes Christ present in the community 24 hours, 24 7. Every moment of his life. He is the source of the presence of Christ to all. That's why every parish has the Blessed Sacrament. And the first one to make sure that, the, that Christ is accompanied and Christ accompanies the whole community is the priest. That's why a holy priest is the one who is Eucharistic. A holy priest is the one who, is, who has time to kneel down before the real presence of the Lord. And it is the Lord who radiates in him that he is able to share with the whole community that is through whom we, he is able to unite the whole community. And we go farther than that because that is what really is meant originally in the plan of the bishops to make this year the communion of communities. That communion is present in the basic ecclesial community. Christ is also there. There may be leaders like you who should be Christ first of all and selfish and dedicated and eager to give his life for his people. The basic English community need that kind of leaders. And I always thought that people like you are the real realization of the basic ecclesial communities everywhere. If you are in a government, in a country where the church is persecuted, there will be real basic ecclesial communities. People who are united who will choose a leader who can always inspire everyone to be faithful to the Lord. And then, the family. The basic ecclesial community is not real if it is not composed of families, united, dedicated. It is again Jesus. That's why the Son of God became part of a family. The family composed of his real mother, because Mary is truly his mother. The foster father, but he's so holy, <coughs> which is a mother for all fathers, because he makes present. He is the visible sign of the fatherhood of the eternal God. When Jesus looks at St. Joseph, he admires the human face of the eternal father. 
And Joseph knows that he is not the father of Jesus, but he played his role completely. He is loved and he loved the child like a true father. The best father that humanity ever produced. Because true sign of God, loving, protective of his bride and the child. That's why Joseph is also the protector of the church because of that love for the mother and the child, which we are now part of. The family is the presence of Jesus. Every child that is born has to become like Jesus, united to Jesus. That's why every family that is united can make a, basic, a real, authentic, basic ecclesial community. And basic ecclesial community united because Christ is there. And all are members of Christ's body. One with Christ. He the head with the members. He the vine with the branches. The blood that flows through that community is the blood of Christ. And the food is the body of Christ. That is centered on Christ. It is a communion. And then, in the parish, in the diocese, in the Holy Spirit Church. But what is... What makes us really recognize Christ in communion? It is faith. That's why it is true what you have learned from St. Paul that we must stand firm in faith. And, when, and the Old Testament has said it very clearly. If your faith is firm, then you are firm. Why is our faith, why, is, why are our communities divided? You know, the enemies of the church, the enemies of God, the enemies of the Blessed Mother, because the Blessed Mother symbolizes all of us, the church. She is the church that already is. We are the church that must still be completely united to Christ. The enemies, or the enemy, collectively, or the symbol of that, Satan. Satan means enemy of God, Satana means enemy of God. The enemy of God will destroy, will try to destroy everything that God builds. He is devil. From Greek, diabolain means to destroy. Symbolain, symbol is to unite. The, the, that, the, the flag is a symbol because when we look at that, we are united as a people. Christ is the symbol in, in uh, theological terms, in uh, Biblical term, sacrament. Sacrament is a sign of unity that brings about unity. He will try to destroy that. If our communities are being destroyed because of pride, sometimes we blame this person or that person. It is the devil who sometimes gets hold of us. Leadership will be a destructive leadership if it is inspired by the devil. Inspired by God, it will be a leadership that leads to Christ, that leads to God, that makes the communion. That is what we should always strive after. Yes, we must have faith. Faith that is Christ present in our leaders, in the Pope, in the bishops, in the priests, in our elders, in the father of the family. It is Christ who is there. And Christ who will always be there, especially in every child that is born. It is the mother of Christ so united to the Son of God made men that is in every woman who is the light, the life of the family. We must see Christ everywhere. We must believe. That's why it is a wonderful thing that we are gathered here at the foot of the cross with Mary. And we are, we can always consider ourselves as the people of God born because of the faith of Abraham. Abraham the father of faith, Mary, the woman of faith, are the ones whom we can always turn to. Abraham who symbolizes God the Father. We can only be one. We can be a communion in Christ if we believe. And believing is not a matter of knowing everything and rationalizing everything. Believing is more living and being. Being with God, living as God, Son, children of God and living with one another in that life 
of being all called towards one destiny, heaven. That's why Our Lady of Fatima, a hundred years ago this year, appeared always to call us to go back to her son. And there is only one way, prayer. To pray means to believe. Prayer is the life of those who believe that God is always there. The greatest man of prayer, symbol of our Blessed Mother, is the prophet Elijah. And he has two, two m- mottos in life. One is, uh, I, uh, domin- vivit dominus in quis conspectus to. The Lord God is alive. Before Him I stand. That is prayer. We are always present before the eternal presence. God is never absent. We tend to go away from God. We, went, we tend to absent ourselves from Him. But He is always there. And if we believe, we will always recognize His presence and stay there 24-7, 365 and then one-fourth days a year. And all our life, He lives. Before Him, we are always present with them. The other motto is, Zelo zelavi pro domino Deus sabaoth. I burn with zeal for the cause of the God, the Lord of all, of armies. Meaning to say, our whole life is dedicated to the work of God. There is nothing wasted. Even when we are resting, our life is active, proclaiming God, loving God, and being the source of love, of God's love for others. That is how we should live. That is, what we, that is how we become a communion. We must pray. The Blessed Mother is a woman of prayer because she always stands in the presence of God. Therefore, fulfilling also God's will, doing everything, every act he, she did, even when it is a normal act of a mother of the family or a woman in the house, she did it for eternal purpose in love for God and the service of the Almighty. We must do the same. Pray, she said. And she asked us to pray the rosary every day. Would that we follow that? When, we, when the family prays together, especially the rosary, and the rosary is the life of Christ as lived by the Blessed Mother, the whole life of the Blessed Mother dedicated to her son, which should be the way we should also live. Because Christ must penetrate our whole being and our life should be consecrated to Christ. She asks us to pray the rosary, which, is, which means active acceptance of Christ in our life and the total consecration of ourselves to Christ. We must be like that. That is what she asks. And that we need real conversion to Christ. Christ is everything for us. Nothing should even deprive, nothing in ourselves should, be, should remove Christ. We should belong to Him. He gave Himself totally to us, including His divinity. We have to give our nothingness to Him, our whole nothingness. Sometimes we don't give ourselves to Him because we think we are someone. We are nothing before God, and God wants our nothing so that He can fill us with His everything. That is what St. John of the Cross said, no? We must embrace the nada in order to receive the todo so that we can be filled with wholeness. And the Blessed Mother also asks us to consecrate ourselves to her. She keeps, she, she seriously takes that role that Christ told her, her son, behold your son. She's always looking for us. She wants us to be with her. That's why we had to consecrate ourselves to her immaculate heart. That is her call. Because if we belong to her heart, if her heart is with us, united to ours, then we belong to Christ and we belong to God. 100 years ago, and again and again, you know, the, there is an, I think in Ecuador, an apparition to a sister, no, a venerable, I forgot the name, that was in the 16th century. The Blessed Mother told her, in the 20th century, she will be appearing again and again. And she, she described, it will be only known in this time, she described how things will be difficult for us. Some people will say that uh, the last days are here. 
And sometimes we are afraid. We should not be afraid. The last days means the triumph of God, but it, there will be that will mean difficulties for many of us, and it is happening. The persecution of Christians worse than ever is happening now. And also the infidelities, even within the church, it is, they are happening now. The Blessed Mother said that in Fatima. The Blessed Mother said that even earlier. I heard in Ecuador, I would still know, I have to still know and discover that. I learned that only a few days ago. The mystic in the 16th century, she is active. Why? Even now, right here in our midst, you as families, it's good that you have chosen her to accompany you all the time because there is no, there, there is no one else who can assure our fidelity to Christ than the woman of faith. She who believed in the words, in the promises that God has made to her, and her means also the people of God. We have to believe God will fulfill His promises to save us, and we must allow God to save us. And right now, in our midst, we are being told, and we are seeing it with our eyes. We see that everywhere the power of hell is let loose, but it has no strength if we, are, if we have faith. If we have faith like that of Mary, the faith of Abraham, and that faith is total surrender to God and allowing God to live in us and to do everything for us. We need only to allow ourselves to be at the disposal of God and do everything as a sign of fidelity, faithful service of Him. All what we do for our brothers and sisters, especially those who still do not know God or do not want to follow Him, is the fruit of our love for God. Let that love prevail and stand firm. When our faith is firm, we will be firm. And our country needs that. Let us pray hard because I believe our country now that we in the presence of our brothers and sisters from everywhere, we are also called and accept, we must accept that humbly this challenge to tell the world the real salvation. The one that will unite the world are not arms, it's not money. The one that will unite the world is Jesus. And believe in the faith in Him and in Him who is true God and true man, our only Savior. So let us be firm. Let our faith be firm. Let us make sure that our faith is strong so that we as individual children of ch child of God, we as communities, we as covenant communities, we as a communion of communities, we as church, together with Mary, the mother of the church, the church, our mother, will be firm. And God will surely triumph we must also triumph with him. Please all stand. Christ came to call sinners, offering them salvation with humility of spirit. Aware of his call, let us bring our prayers to the Father and say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Semoga gereja merupakan suatu tempat Kesembuhan bagi orang-orang yang lemah dan bagi orang-orang yang berdosa. Let's us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Betirger rogui, elolab olsa alabuai, olsa bil gergik langer alir elogi wak lemrang. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
Do kanu no da toko do koboin sianan om kolotian kuma do ituhun ngavi di noko sodu pogi gizon mantat kinoingan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Nga ang mga tao nga gitawag pagkabalaan mo sama kang Maria muhalad sa ilang kinabuhi ngadto sa Dios ug sa simbahan pinaagi sa kaputli pinaagi sa kalisod ug sa pagka masidugtanon Let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer that the dead may experience the saving power of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <coughs> Let us pray for our lawmakers that will, they will desist from reviving the death penalty. And we pray that the whole world would accept the importance of life, even for those who are misled and instead of putting an end to their lives may they be led to change of life for the better and also we pray that in our country especially in other countries where human rights are denied including uh, extrajudicial killings that uh, that will be ended and the, the god of life will prevail so we ask that uh, we are pre be preserved this country and all other countries with the similar problems will be preserved from extrajudicial killing. And let us pray for the success of the World Apostolic Congress and mercy when uh, the whole day will be held in the San Padre Pio Shrine in uh, Santa Tomas Batangas. You are invited on Janu January 18. May we really discover, as the Holy Father said at the end of the extraordinary jubilee of mercy he said now we have we, we are at the time of mercy the time of mercy is really believing and exercising mercy to one another and mercy is uh, as we will uh, re reflect during those days it is the church that has experienced forgiveness that can be an agent of forgiveness to others a merciful church is the one who have who has understood having received and continuously receiving the mercy of God. Let us entrust every to the mighty hands of our Blessed Mother and pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord, Lord is, is with thee. Blessed is art thou among, among women, women, and blessed is the, the fruit of thy womb, womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, direct the minds of those called to make crucial choices in their lives. Give them an understanding heart, sound judgment, and burning desire to do what pleases you. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the Eucharist.
and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church receive our offerings O Lord and transform them into the mystery of salvation so that by its power we may be set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary mother of the church and with her may be united more closely to the work of redemption through Christ our Lord the Lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and eternal God and to proclaim your greatness with dire with due praise as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary mother of the church receiving your word in her immaculate heart she was found worthy to conceive him in her virgin's womb and giving birth to the creator she nurtured the beginnings of the church standing beside the cross she received the testament of divine love and took to herself as sons and daughters all those who by the death of Christ are born to heavenly life as the apostles awaited the spirit you had promised she joined her supplication to the prayers of the disciples and so became the pattern of the church at prayer raised to the glory of heaven she accompanies your pilgrim church with the mother's love and watches in kindness over the church homeward steps until the Lord's day shall come in glorious splendor and so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without and we acclaim created right to give you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and work of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy this gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist, these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death you will to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his holy spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Luis Antonio, and our bishop here, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, especially our brothers, CFCs and sisters, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ, our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us give to each other the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For an orderly reception of the Holy Communion, we would be doing communion row by row. Thank you.
Holy Communion. Please raise your hands for those who haven't received the Holy Communion. Having received the pledge of redemption and of life, we humbly pray, O Lord, that with the Blessed Virgin's motherly help, your Church may teach all nations by proclaiming the Gospel and through the grace of the outpouring of the Spirit, fill the whole earth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, the Couples for Christ Global Community would like to thank our beloved clergy for celebrating this afternoon's Holy Mass. Let's give a round of applause for <laughs> Father Carlos Santos of the Order of Friars Minor from Tel Aviv, Israel. <laughs> Father Marco Coloma from es e Ecuador, South America. <laughs> Father Ronald Magbanwa, CICM from Mongolia. <laughs> Father Keson Wan from the Diocese of Bayombong, Nueva Vizcaya. <laughs> Father Anthony Layog from the Diocese of Lingen, Dagupan. <laughs> Father Bruno Hinilia from the Diocese of Tagum, Davao. Monsignor Alan Agalon, CFC Spiritual Director and Parish Priest of St. James the Great Parish in Alabang. <laughs> and our presider for this afternoon, His Excellency, Most Reverend Ramon C. Arguelles, Archbishop of Lipa. <laughs> we also like to acknowledge the presence of Father Joel Hasson from the Parish of Mary Mirror of Justice Parish. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now mm -hmm. and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made, who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to bring the love of God to others. Thanks be to God.
you so much, Archbishop Ramon Arguelles, and to our entire guest priest for celebrating the Mass with us. Thank you also to CFC Nueva Vizcaya for the 100-man chorale. Let's give the Lord a big hand! And now, to give us some good news, updates, and who knows, some prizes, let's hear it from Ablaze Communication. Let's welcome Brother JQ and Sister Ninai. Good afternoon! Good afternoon, couples! For Christ! I can't hear you. Can you all stand up? Can you all stand up? Let's give God a round of applause. And thank you for your standing ovation. <laughs> we may now sit down, brothers and sisters. Down. All right, I'm JQ. And my name is Dinai, and we are advocates of CFC Blaze Communications. Yes, and... Uh, we need to speak in English here. Yeah, thank you. So, yung asawa ko na po bahala sa English and I will do the rest of the Tagalog. <laughs> okay. So, Ninay, anong meron? Again, can we greet, okay, each other all over Mall of Asia Arena? Pwede bang tumayo ulit? And let's greet one another. Come on! Make some new friends! Come yeah. on! Alright, JQ. You know, our spouses or our families are truly a blessing to us. Uh-huh. And this afternoon, we will be blessed even more because of Ablaze Communications because they will be giving free prizes. Who wants to win Ablaze freebies? Make some noise! I can't hear you! Can you see your raise of hands? Alright, All right. everybody wants to win prizes from a place community. You know what, Tina, since we're in the arena and uh, most of the basketball games are is here, meron kami tinatawag na hug come. Hindi hug ka na, hug come. Every time the camera makatutok sa inyo, yung partner nyo, yung asawa nyo, yung all of your family, pwede kayong mag-hug each other. Tama ba, Ninay? Yes, JQ. But before that, we would like to um, go back to last year. Do you okay, know what uh, happened last year? Last 2016, Ablaze Communications came up with a material that would emphasize on the sense of importance in investing in the family. Yes. As we heard a while ago, that uh, the family is the presence of Jesus Christ. Yes. Okay. And it is also an essential part in building the future of our society. That's why last year, Ablaze Communication um, came up with Family Time. Oh, sino dito may Family Time magazine? Taas kamay! Hindi yung CBC, hindi yung CBCP, ha? Yung Family Time magazine. Yes, it's the ultimate goal to great family life magazine. As you know, JQ, um, for the past um, editions, the first edition that Family Time had was um, featured Rafi Tima and Maris Umali. Oh, no. Rafi Tima, they are, they, I think they are couples for Christ. Yeah. And then they also had Christian Jacobs, Dimples Romana, mm -hmm. Boots and Sonroa, the Kua family from the, the pairing Parenting Emporium, RJ Jimenez, Chris Chu will be um, for the latest ep um, edition. And it, the contents of um, the family time, um, it also tackles the secret to successful marriage or family life. And cooking. Even yeah, there's cooking, cooking there. Uh -huh. And tips on effective parenting. And who knows, JQ, maybe for the next edition, That's why in our the, faces can be... In the hub come, uh -huh. Okay, maybe your picture will be there in the next edition. Can and be. of course, meron ding prize na mangyayari. Okay. And now, we will be going to our game. 
Again, sino dito? Yung sa taas. Are you excited? Okay. This is just a simple game. The hug cam. Yes. We have our hug cam. And it will be roaming around the whole arena. And as you see on screen, on screen, if you see your faces there, you will be doing the biggest, the warmest hug, hug that you ever. can give to your husband or wife or to your family if you're together. All right? Okay, are you ready? Are you excited? Couples, we're Christ! Keep the camera rolling! All right. Again, to makita niyo sarili niyo, you can hug each other. Okay. Hug. Hug. Bilang na, bilang na kaisin. All right. Our camera is rolling. It's roaming and roaming and roaming. Okay. Don't forget to get your prize or prizes. Those are labasa a place that Time Magazine booth. Again, we're still looking for more hugs. Hug lang. Here we go. All right. Hug. Can we get some hugs, Tita Tita. My kiss, pa, huh? So we have two. Mahiyain na mga tito. Oo nga eh. Ma Titas talaga yung nag-initiate. Okay. Pa? Wala naman masyadong tipid. Just, yung hug talaga. Let's okay. give our warmest hug. Isa pa. Here we go. Alright. Can hug. we have some hug? hug. Alright. Yes. For our next hug. Okay. Isa pa. Ilan na yun? The three hugs na, no? Apat na. Lima, di ba? Mm. Okay. Last, last two. One. Last two. Oh, man, All right! Some Parang Nino at Kilang ata natin sila. <laughs> From CFC Sambuanga. Yeah, yeah. At bay naman, hindi hug. Ah, at bay. Okay. Okay, okay last one. Dapat, ah. Ready na? Nag-ready na? There we go! Hug! Hindi lang ata sila JQ. Hindi ata sila sanay mag-hugs in for sa public eh. Okay! Let's give them a round of applause! Alright, congratulations to all the winners. Prizes may be claimed from the family time booth outside this hall. You may also register to receive newsletters or e-articles for your daily guide about family. Okay, you know what, Dina, this uh, morning we, we have uh, the Facebook Live of Ablaze communication. Yeah, I saw you there a while ago. Yeah, and uh, sino doon nanood kanina ng Facebook Live? While uh, coming here, nag, uh, nag, nag start yung line and we launched the, the, the new, okay? Ang bagong uh, uh, cfcablaze.com, okay? okay? It's the CFC Ablaze website where we can see and experience its many features like we can order a Blaze product. Yes, pwede mag-order doon at... Uh, Pwede yatang mag-fit din doon. Hindi, hindi. <laughs> order lang, order lang. Okay, cfcablaze.com Yes, we can also, aside from ordering products, we can even listen to the music okay. originally made by our community members. Yes. And also, we can download files such as our CLP PowerPoint slides. CLP PowerPoint slides. Okay. We won't have any difficulties in creating our PowerPoint presentations. It's already made for us through CFC Ablaze. Hindi na po high-tech na po tayo ngayon. And by browsing, you will get to see what's new and be up-to-date with what Ablaze has to offer to our community. 
Ah, kung ano mga latest, ano mga bago. And we have a, su a surprise for everyone. For those who will register today, you will immediately get 10% discount. 10% discount? Yes, 10% discount if you order from our website. And outside this hall, we have a set of computers for you to be able to experience it already. Once you get out of this hall, makikita nyo po yung mga yes. computer set up there. And we can register online already. Especially yung mag-CCR. Pwede kayong tumaan doon. Of course, mag-alcohol tayo, okay? <laughs> so, yun yung isa sa mga fan. 10% the discount. 10% discount. Now, we hope you were able to drop your raffle tickets in the Ablaze drop boxes booth outside. Were you able to drop your raffle tickets there? No. no? Okay, but we have some who did already. Yes, because we have winners already. Right now, we will be announcing the winners of our raffle. And I hope I pronounce it ng maayos. Ruel Habarabas. Okay. Jennifer Kazin. Marilyn Ungab. Ruth Tolfo Carrizo. Carrizo. Rino Baluyot. Marilyn Cabrias. Jean, Gina Linko, Marilo Andag, Franco Pilayo, Egifonso Cabillas. We also have Ariel Solestre, Nene Casane, Joseph Garak, Ferdinand Ilohe, Nicole, Marie Aguilar, S.C. Arambala, Soji Maris, Eddie Arenas, Ralph Makura, Makura and Javier Gaspar. All of our winners would be um, can claim their prizes outside at the Family Time booth. And palapakal po natin ang lahat ng nanalo. And of course, uh, thank you so much, Ablaze, uh, for helping us and uh, for all our needs, like uh, our shirts, or maybe right now in our CLP uh, PowerPoint or sa mga tanta pa. Okay? And uh, for more information, you may search CFC Ablaze on your Facebook, CFC Ablaze in Twitter, CFC Ablaze in your Instagram accounts. Alright. Or you can, yeah, you can log on also to cfcablaze.com. Okay, thank you for listening. This is JK and this is Nina. God bless, God bless, God bless. Brothers and sisters, let us watch these infomercials for our events for 2017. Open ourselves to Him in response to this extraordinary invitation to drink the water of life. This is the fire that is in our heart and all of these things, brothers and sisters, we will take the extra mile so that we will not only work for the scholar, but we will work for God and we will work for one another, brothers and sisters. All these programs are good, but if we will not be a shepherd to one another as Christ did to us, all these programs will be nothing. Brothers and sisters, we did all this because this is what a fiesta is really all about. The real essence of the fiesta is to rejoice in the Lord, to pray, and to give thanks. But they each member will be a bring home Christ.
Christ no, and share that Christ to their family. I believe when the Lord calls, He truly equips, He provides, and He sustains. Because human as I am, I can only do so much for my family. But the Lord can do more than I, than I can. Life. Despite our sinfulness, despite our weaknesses, we will always have sins. We will always have weaknesses. But our God is giving us this gift of grace. Free. God join us. I know it has been a very long day. It's not easy to be under the heat of the sun. Amen. But because we are grateful, because God is faithful, we are here, we remain. John 4, 24, it says, God is spirit. For it is by the power of God's spirit that we can push him as he wants. Blaze Communications and that was all that will be all our events for our 2017 brothers and sisters are you ready to worship the Lord I cannot hear you are you ready to worship the Lord can we say this stand firm in the Lord One more time, stand firm in the Lord. To lead us in worship, let us call on a retired military major general from the Philippine Air Force and now serving in the Order of St. Michael. Please welcome Brother Willie Ona. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Today, uh, I'm already retired from the armed forces. But in the couples for Christ, there is no retirement. About uh, two or three days ago, or four or three or four days ago, my wife told me, I have a good news for you. And I asked, what? You will be the worship leader. <laughs> and I told her, what is the theme for today? It is stand firm in the faith. So, what's all about? My wife told me, you just stand firm on the stage and have faith. <laughs> but kiddingly aside, kiddingly aside, 37 years I've been in the armed forces. Now, they told my wife also to wear my uniform. But once we have shed our uniforms and we put them inside the cabinet, we cannot wear them anymore. So what I did is just I asked uh, the program director if I can wear my service flight jacket 
and here I am with my ceremonial gloves at the same time. But 37 years almost in the armed forces, I would say that it's a series of ups and downs. Without a community, if you are in the armed forces, it could be very hard for a military personnel or an officer. Like, for example, in our armed forces, in particular the Air Force, we are only around 15 or 17,000 personnel. But the officers are just around 2,500. And to swim around what's happening in the armed forces, the armed forces, not new to us, is also like the other institutions. It swam around a series of controversies. If, if we are not familiar with what's happening around, either we can graduate from the armed forces with clean names, or you just be one of those in the courts or in trial today. So for me, uh, my wife and I, Amy is there, who had been with me through thick and thin in the armed forces. When we joined the Corporal Surprise, I was only a captain. And after uh, almost six months of having this uh, household prayer meeting, my, my, uh, I, I can still remember that area in my life wherein we, we were introduced uh, as a military personnel uh, in the household of Brother Eugene and Sister Head Decision. They are now in Canada. I call that area that passed that part of my life as a household to have the humble beginning of humility in me. And that's the time that uh, I was able to pastor also uh, the soldiers and some of the civilians in the in the in, in Billiamore Air Base and later on in Bikutan. And then I was uh, lucky to have a very passionate um, household leader, Brother Bong Arunilio and Sister Carol. And I, 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 called it, I called that year as the passion year of my service with the Lord in CFC. Now, I can still remember that last year in the same January, I had a heart attack at Baguio City during the Rejoice Weekend. As you can see, three years from now, it will be a year over. Without the Couples for Christ prayers and brothers and sisters, without even uh, a brother doctor here, Brother Joyam and Sister Mila, and all the other prayers, I think maybe I am ahead of President Marcos in Libinga ng mga bayani. But through the prayers and continual, continual uh, 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 things that we had here at CFC, I continue together with my family to be of service at the, at the Order of St. Michael. It's a payback, I should say, that uh, daily we, we were able to uh, go with the program of the Philippine Army. Now, the Order of St. Michael is into the, the Philippine Military Academy. They are into uh, the uh, uh, General Headquarters through the, the, our, AF, our doctors at Biluna at AP Medical Center uh, at, and at uh, Maritime, of Asia and, uh, Maritime Academy of Asia in the Pacific. Going over these things without Without couples for Christ in my life, I should say that uh, it will be a boring life for me. Because uh, at the early part of my career, I should say that I can, I can divide my career in every 12 years before my 37th year. And I'm lucky to have that after my 12th year, 12th year in, in the military, I was able to, ch to join Corpus for Christ in 1994 with my wife. And we, are, we are lucky to help South B to nurture uh, Billiamore Air Base. So it's a planting time for me. The seeds has grown with, the, with, with my family. 
without couples for Christ in our life, I can't imagine what it could have been, especially when it comes to my work. For the information of everyone, I was able to immerse into the logistics family. It's a logistics family that when, if you are not aware of what's happening, then you will be part of the problem. There are so many things that when I, when I was there, it caught my attention that what am I going to do at the unit that I am in, in the procurement? Am I going to join the others? While after joining them, I will be praying and singing with my household mates during our household meeting? And I thought, and I said to God, can I digest, can I, can I meet you during the prayer meeting while doing the other things in the procurement service? And so what happened to me in, during my, my rank of major, I was relieved in my post because we were, I, I did not uh, go with the whims and caprices of my wing commander. Who was, who was about to retire then. Just imagine there are 10 purchase orders with 17 million each, and they asked me to receive it in my warehouse. You know, if one is not aware of what's happening, if I receive them, I'll be the end portion. And I told the guy, I told the suppliers, there, you, you, you can never see any, any signature of even the commanding general for these purchase orders. I will be the one to sign it. And when the commission on audit look at my warehouses and nowhere to be found, then I'll be in hot water. I'll just, I have just to wait for 5, 10, or 15 years, and the issue will be coming out. And they asked me, and the commanders uh, asked me, uh, Major, you just sign it. We will be given 10 Port Piera in addition to others. And I told my wing commander during that time, who happened to about to retire? And I asked, and I asked my wing commander, Sir, I will not sign the paper. You just relieve me or I go out of the unit. Had it not for CFC, maybe I will not be able to say to my commander what's happening. There was also a time in my life that I handled the procurement office, the retail stores of the Air Force. Sad to say that is not happening now. But during those times, if you are the commander of that retail stores, I'm handling worth 20 million stores for the armed forces. And I can uh, recycle, revolve the fund three or four times. So you expect that there, is, there are around 20 million uh, inside the warehouse, the inventory, and at the same time, there are around another 20 million that we had just uh, uh, procured out of bidding and another 20 million coming in through the pipeline. And you know the bidding then. It is by point system. Whenever I point to the supplier, they will win the bid. That is how powerful 1994 to 2000 that is how powerful. I have with me the members of the Beach and Ward Committee and I am the chairman. And during that time, I am already a household head during that time. And it was November, I can still remember it was November of that year. And I asked my uh, executive officer, um, Captain Arnold Tumpalang, and I asked him, Captain, we have to talk. Here is somebody here, two suppliers, offering me something. It's about the Mongol pencil. 
it costs around 350, 3 pesos and 50 centavos. But we can sell it at 4 or 550 per piece. And my retail store for the Air Force is programming around 20 to 30,000 per quarter. And the supplier told me, you can have one peso per pencil. And that's 20 to 30,000 a quarter in circa 1995. If I am not a household leader or members of CFC, maybe I'm enjoying myself somewhere in Baclaran. And then, when I reviewed the line items that I have in my inventory, I saw that there are 111 line items that I have. And that's one over 111 line items, the Mongol pencil. And here comes another supplier who offered me for my duffel bag, the one being used for deployment. And they told me they are already servicing the Philippine National Police. And what they are giving me is 500 pesos per bag. And they asked me, how many, how many per quarter are you ordering? And I told them, I told the supplier, I'm ordering 3,500 to 4,500 unit per quarter. Just multiply it, brothers and sisters, 4,500 times 500 pesos. It's worth 2 million plus. But had it not for, a, for the couples for Christ, how can I say to my household members who are soldiers and civilians? And then later on, my household, my, my BBA chapter head, who, who is then Brother Vic and Sister Hilda Panisales, our chapter leader then, uh, will, will, will appoint me to to, to higher uh, position in the CFC. How can I answer God if I am like that? So, brothers and sisters, there is something in the CFC that the uniform personnel needs. That's why it's something in me that after my heart attack, I can't imagine that I can survive. And so with that, brothers and sisters, it's really something I wanted you all to, for this time, to praise the Lord and praise God. Let's all stand up in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Yeah.
Lord. We praise and thank you today for this gathering of prayer for souls and leaders of couples for Christ. We also praise and thank you for the gift of commitment. Though our full commitment might, might not be enough for your generosity, for your blessings, and for your gift of love to us. Lord, we thank you for the protection that you are giving to all of us whenever we are on missions, whenever we are away from our families. We also praise and thank you that in spite of our weaknesses, our insufficiency, there you are. You are our strength. And with fear, no more. In God's strength, in your strength, we find peace and we can stand firm in the faith. Lord, also we praise you for this afternoon, for giving us our elders. So bless them, their Father. Bless this community. Bless all of us. And also, Lord, we leave up to you our shortcomings. This lack of understanding, Lord, we ask for forgiveness. And so, Lord, for these years, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 to 14, you said that beyond beyond all the things that we have, especially for the to, in order for us to stand faith, to be courageous, we have to guard to be on guard. We have to be standing on our faith. We have to be courageous. We have to be strong. And we'll do our every act out of love. And so, Lord, we ask you to guard our lips, our eyes, our ears, and our senses so that you can we can guard ourselves for the ill judgment to others. And also, Lord, bless our spirits and our souls and even our hearts and our minds so that we can stand firmly in the faith and not to stand firmly in our intellect, in the status of our lives. Lord, also take hold of our hands, take hold of our feet, take hold of our arms, so that we can courageously leave our comfort zones, strongly saying, that we can serve others, our brothers and sisters, out of love. In all of this, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, and all pray, glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and forever. Amen. Praise be to God.
and to give our first session entitled A New Spirit in Christ. Please, let's give it up for our CFC president, Brother George Campos. Thank you very much, my security. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Do you know that my legs are wobbly right now? My hands are a bit shaking and feeling cold. Ask me why. Brothers and sisters, it's not because there are 16,000 men and women here. It is not because these men and women are coming from all walks of life, coming from U.S., South America, the Middle East, coming from uh, Australia, New Zealand, but just coming from Mindanao, Visayas. But there's one thing, brothers and sisters, that makes my feet wobbly. And it's because of the presence of my father. My father is here. May I ask you, Pat, to please stand up. The first time, there's my father. The first time that I have asked my father to be here with me. This is my fourth time to be here, but it's only the first time that I had that courage to ask my father, Pa, could you join me? And yes, I heard that very sweet yes from him. That's why I had to make a very good impression to my father. And I hope I make it, uh, and I, I impress my father, but more than that, brothers and sisters, that I may be able to glorify the Lord with this very beautiful talk that he has given to me. Pa, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. I also have my sibling here. My, my children are here. I don't know where they are seated, but I thank them for being here, supporting me in this talk that the Lord has given. We have a very beautiful theme for 2017, brothers and sisters. But this was not given to us on a, sing, on a silver platter. Our Lord prepared us through the years. But I would like to talk about the many years that we had. I would like us to start with 2015. What was our theme for 2015, brothers and sisters? Do you still remember? What is it, brothers and sisters? Love more. We have a very beautiful love uh, theme for 2015. It is love more. But it is not just love more, brothers and sisters. What is it saying? It is saying to love more, to love even, to love until it hurts no more. That is the message, to love until it hurts no more. 2016, what was our theme, brothers and sisters? Rejoice, pray, and give thanks. You know, brothers and sisters, those are bounded together. It's a triad. Rejoice, pray, and give thanks. We, brothers and sisters, we pray. Do we pray, brothers and sisters? And as we pray, it, there's something that awakens us. There's something that awakens us, brothers and sisters, for us to be grateful. As we pray, something is awakened, awakened in us for us to be grateful. And as we are grateful, it leads us to becoming joyful. And as we are joyful, it moves us again, brothers and sisters, to be prayerful. It is, if I would like to term this in a secular a terminology, a vicious cycle. It's a cycle that must never end. Pray, be grateful, rejoice, pray, be grateful, and rejoice. That is how our Lord prepared us for 2016 because we are being asked to stand firm. Not really just like what Brother Willie said, we need to stand in the middle and be firm. He called us to stand firm. 
And how are we going to stand firm, brothers and sisters? That I will tell you later. But why was that theme given to us? 2017, what is in store for us this 2017? There will be beautiful things, victories, successes. But believe me, brothers and sisters, 2017 also will be a challenging year for all of us. Probably there will be difficulties that we'll be experiencing. And if we do, if we don't have that faith, if we're not standing firm in our faith, what would happen to us? Oh, this might fly away. There are, are certainties, brothers and sisters, that's coming our way. This must, and this might shake us, bring us down, and slow us down. Or if we have, and we are standing firm in our faith, this will make us stronger. Looking at our theme, 1 Corinthians 16, 13 to 14, the anchor verse is taken is at the last part or the last chapter of that uh, letter of St. Paul. So 1 to 15 is about so many things. But why is it that we, the, 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 the theme, Sun from Fame is taken, the, the letter of St. Paul is taken, uh, that verse is there written at the last portion of uh, that, that letter of St. Paul. There must be a reason, a very good reason. Why, brothers and sisters? Because the verse, the, the chapters from 1 to 15 depict something that is not alien to us. It's just like us, brothers and sisters. The verses one, the chapters 1 to 15 are, uh, should I say, corrections that uh, St. Paul would like us to take, uh, uh, a life that he wants us to correct. He also wants us to give directions. And these are the challenges that Corinth is facing, brothers and sisters. Mind you, is that what Corinth is only facing? Brothers and sisters, it's not. But first and foremost, what is Corinth? Corinth is, should I say, a, cold, a, a place there in Europe that is a cauldron of cultures. In Filipino, for those who are uh, cooking, pwede po natin tawagin chapsoy, halo-halo. It's a very, very wealthy uh, city. Very, uh, the economy is very high, very successful, brothers and sisters. Corridor of commerce. A lot of population from different cultures are there, Jews, Romans, Greeks, and others. And it is the ancient world's largest melting pot of cultures. So what are the realities in Corinth? What I have presented was just a glimpse of Corinth, but what are the realities in Corinth? Number one, brothers and sisters, there is division in the church. There are a lot of factions within the community that St. Paul has established. Sounds familiar, brothers and sisters? And they're claiming allegiance to one or another minister. Second, brothers and sisters, is there's disorder in the church, moral disorder, legal disorder, carnal disorder. What were they doing during that time, brothers and sisters? They went back to their pagan sexual practices. And they even tried to justify it, brothers and sisters, for them to be able to continue these pagan practices. An example, an incestuous man was being welcomed publicly in the community and sexual immorality was being tolerated in the name of freedom. Sige, tinatanggap po lahat. 
Sounds familiar, brothers and sisters? The third one, difficulties in the church. The spirit of divisiveness was appearing. Yes, they were eating together, but not really together. One is eating at one side, one is eating at the other side. They were drunk, and the poor were left hungry. They were not really one. There's no sound that I think there's no sound at the back. Okay. In their prayer meetings, brothers and sisters, their prayer meetings was very chaotic. Magulo yung kalang prayer meetings. And sad to say, they were even questioning the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. They don't believe the resurrection. Sounds familiar, brothers and sisters. So what is then needed as being written by St. Paul? He said, there is a renewal, a renewal must be done, must be instituted individually as a community there in Corinth. And how would this be? And how would this be? And that is where our anchor verse comes in. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous and strong. Your every act should be done in love. If you are going to look at those two verses, brothers and sisters, there's something very beautiful about it. The first sentence was not stand firm in the, in the faith or be strong, be courageous. The first sentence was be on guard. Why be on guard? He gave that first thing, uh, gave priority to being on guard. It is being vigilant, being alert, to defend, secure, safeguard, careful, and not to be tricked. But the beautiful about it is it's about being watchful, but there's a love component in that being watchful. He said, a watchful care. From Matthew 26, 41, that is the scene in the agony in the garden. Jesus said to the apostles, watch, say, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. So there is that watchful uh, watchword, be on guard. So these instructions of St. Paul, whether you are now in a situation where the, the, the sea is calm, or the weather is very good, or whether you are being challenged, that is, you are in a stormy sea, these instructions of uh, St. Paul still holds true. Stand firm. We need to stand firm, brothers and sisters. Stand firm first and foremost in our faith. From Ephesians 6.14, it says, Stand therefore. What are we going to stand there for? First and foremost, to stand fast. This is our loins are girded in truth, clothed with righteousness, our feet are shod in readiness. Handang-handa po tayo, mga kapatid. And second, standing. To stand together. Standing together is like a father or a mother or a parent holding a child while still trying to learn to walk. That is standing together. Not all of us, brothers and sisters, have the same maturity. Some, some are young, some are old in terms of maturity, but we are here to stand together to help each and everyone. We must not leave anyone behind and say, you're young, I leave you. I'll let you be. But no, we must stand together hand in hand, helping one another. That is standing firm 
together, brothers and sisters. Why is it that we're going to do that? We are all leaders here, brothers and sisters, here in Topos for Christ. Not just five years, not just ten years here in the community. All of us have gone through some radical change when we said yes. And self-acceptance. That does each and every one, you and me, mga kapatid, without exception, must be ready to dig deep, to speak up, and to act together. Because the challenges that we have is very great. Second thing of standing firm in the faith, in our theme is being courageous and being strong. With regards to our works, or should I say, the good works that we have. Courageous means to strongly act, not timidly, but to strongly act, brothers and sisters, deliberately act, because faith without works is dead. More so, brothers and sisters, the good works that we do must not be attributed to us, but we must attribute this to the goodness and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hindi po tayo magaling. Hindi po tayo matalino. Kung kaya't naging successful. It's not about that, brothers and sisters. We are successful because of God's grace. He said in Psalm 31, verse 25, Be strong and let your heart take courage. Brothers and sisters, let us be strong in the Lord. No fear. This is God's work. This is not our work. God will equip us. God will strengthen us. God will be with us. So, what about the manner of our acting? He says, this must be done in love. If this must be done in love, then everything must be in the form of charity. From Colossians 3.14, it says, Above all this, put on love, which binds together in perfect harmony. So everything must be done for not for our sake, but everything must be done for the sake of God and for the sake of others. I is not part of the equation. It is always God and it's always for others. Brothers and sisters, if you do things in the name of love, you and I will not go wrong. If you look at the present situation, mga kapatid, if you look and uh, watch the TV, hear the radio, read the print, what do we see? What we have in this present situation is not very far different from the environment or the situation in Corinth. The issues they faced before in one form or another is the same issue or issues that we face. Mirrors of the issues we have at hand. What does this mean, brothers and sisters? As I was reading this, sabi ko ang lalim naman nito, but what does this mean? Very simple meaning. The admonitions of St. Paul to the Corinthians are applicable to us in modern times. Though this may have been written a thousand or two thousand years before, this is still true for each and every one of us today. Hindi na po to luma, hindi po to nalaos. It's not passe. The writings there are true. The admonitions of St. Paul are still true today and very, very much applicable. Thus he says, the first verse, the first sentence of our anchor verse, be on guard. St. Paul instructs us to be in guard. 
The church leaders are always on guard. For us in CFC, the International Council, look at how they post. They're really on guard. They are always, we are always on guard, looking at, uh, at every little thing. We want to guard the community. But not only the International Council. I want each and every one of you, mga kapatid, if you are a Metro Manila sector head, if you are a region head, you are a provincial area head, a provincial area director, you are a regional coordinator, you are the head of the ministries, you are a, uh, a cluster head, a chapter head, or member of the uh, uh, area governance team, you must always also be on guard. Not only the International Council, not only your leaders on top, but each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters, everyone here, the 16,000 strong men and women of Couples for Christ, we must all be on guard. We must not sleep. We must not be lax. Why, brothers and sisters, why is it that we must not be lax? It is said, and we have known this a lot of times, and have heard this, and have read this, the wolf is wearing the sheep's clothing. But our enemy right now thinks better. The wolf is wearing the shepherd's clothing now. It's just not wearing the sheep's clothing. The wolf is wearing the shepherd's clothing. If we will not be on guard, brothers and sisters, you might be the wolf. I might be the wolf. Because we are shepherds. We have households. We have men and women under us. Brothers and sisters, the enemy is in our midst. Nasa tabi po natin. If we will not be on guard, we will be lax. You might be the enemy or your shipmate right now will be the enemy. Look at him or look at her closely that you will be on guard so that you may be able to help that person. This is a picture from uh, the fresco in the chapel of Saint uh, San Brizio in Italy. It's the picture of Antichrist. But look at the hand of the Antichrist. It is not his hand. It is the hand of the devil. Look at your hands, brothers and sisters. Is this the hand of the devil right now? And this comes in many forms, mga kapatid. This comes in many forms. Could be wealth, pleasure, power, and honor. So if St. Paul says, be on guard, what does this mean? If we read the Bible, we read Corinthians, let us read it using our own life experience, our own lens. St. Paul is telling us, the statements of St. Paul are, as we read it, this will confirm or this will console us on things that we are doing. Or, brothers and sisters, this will challenge us if we are doing things not in accordance to the will of God. Thus, this would stimulate our reflection. This would stimulate our discernment during our prayer time. We are exhorted to read, to learn, to study, upgrade ourselves, our knowledge and understanding. For when we read the Bible, it says in Psalm 119, uh, verse 105, The word is like a lamp unto my feet, 
and a light unto my path. Everything, brothers and sisters, all answers in our life, we will find in the Bible. Just like Abraham Lincoln. When General Dwight Eisenhower was deciding on when the D-Day, the invasion of Europe, would start, it was a very difficult time of decision for him. Because his decision would decide the fate of the liberation of Europe and also decide the fate of the, the soldiers who would be going to war. And where did he find that answer, that consolation to make that fateful decision, that great decision, that single great decision in his life? It was in the Bible, brothers and sisters. It was in the Bible. For any one of us and every one of us, whether that decision might be great or small, let us consult, let us read the Bible and let God answer us. Everything is there. The Bible is not passe. Hindi po siya luma. Again, it is updated and up to date with regards to our lives. When you look around, mga kapatid, what do you see? Come on, look around. What do you see? How do you look at these people beside you, behind you? Handsome? Beautiful? Yes. Brothers and sisters, this gathering, this gathering is a gathering of saints and sinners. True? With this, brothers and sisters, with this point of view, then how do you look at our community? How do you look at our community couples for Christ? Do you say that now, because this is a gathering of sinners, this is my community, my CFC? Or are you going to say, if this is a gathering of saints and sinners, then I don't want to be part of it. Because there are sinners here. But brothers and sisters, rain falls down. Our God let the rain falls down even to the good and to the not so good. We are breathing the same air, brothers and sisters. We are given the same number of minutes. We may be a gathering, we may be a community of saints and sinners, but let us say, this is my community, this is my CFC, this is my church, this is my parish. Why are we a gathering of saints and sinners? Because we have been consecrated by the blood of Christ, but sad to say, we have desecrated ourselves by being self-centered. We have hindered the building of a loving, unified community because of our turf building, because of our groups, or sometimes we demand and putting in our personal differences. The third one, brothers and sisters, our Lord is asking us to keep our eyes on the cross. What a difference would it make, brothers and sisters? What a difference would it make if every time that we gather together, whether it be household meeting or just a fellowship or just we see each other, that we look and keep our eyes on the cross. A very beautiful depiction. It is as if, if we look at the cross, we come before the Lord in bended knees. And that even though we are not kneeling, the posture of our heart, the posture of our heart, because we're looking at the cross in, in humility, it's as if we are kneeling. Project reform that we had, or that we, ha we have right now, it is a, 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 a program wherein we rehabilitate drug addicts. It, 
our solution is not a solution based on chemicals, not based on psychology, not based on anything, but project reform is God-based, based on God, God's truth. That's why our brethren here in project reform are very successful. They are headed by Brother Arnel Santos. Because the answers that we provide to those drug addicts are answers based on God. Mga kapatid, there is a spiritual wisdom available to those who are spiritually mature. Revelations are revealed to us. The fourth one, this is a very beautiful picture. These are some pictures of the men and women leaders of couples for Christ. Yes, they are individuals as presented here, but they are CFC as well. They are CFC, and you are that, brothers and sisters, we are that. But how do we look at them? How do you look at your leaders? Do you look at them with respect, brothers and sisters? Silence means yes. Or do you look at them with disdain? No, brothers and sisters. It's good that we look at them with respect. Brothers and sisters, I hope we do not exaggerate things, that we find fault with our leaders, as well as the priests as well. We all have our weaknesses. But there's one principle that I have in mind, uh, that I have in my life, and I believe strongly in this, that there is more good, there is more good in, in, in each and every one than their faults or weaknesses. Brothers and sisters, yes, we have our faults and weaknesses, but what I want each and every one of us, as St. Paul, Paul is exhorting us, is to find comfort, to find strength, to find love, to find friendship, to find that brotherhood and sisterhood from each and every one. Yes, we are weak, but find more consolation that that brother, that sister loves you. Why? Because God is in you, brothers and sisters. God is in your leaders. God is in each and every one. Look beyond the person. See Christ in their faces. See Christ in them. They have been anointed by a Lord to lead us. They are accountable to the Lord. Believe me when I say this, the leaders in Corpus for Christ, and these are you, all of us. We think and act not for our welfare, not for our own welfare, but we think and we act for the welfare of our members. Not our personal agenda or our personal welfare, but for the welfare of our brothers. A question, mga kapatid. Can you become a saint? Can I become a saint? Can we all became, become a saint? That's why we are here in Couples for Christ, brothers and sisters. We are trying to become saints. We are trying to become saints. And the fifth one that St. Paul is exhorting us, because of the many difficulties that we face daily in our lives, extrajudicial killings, pornography. By the way, pornography, child pornography here in the Philippines is very rampant. Child pornography. When we had a visit with Bantay Bata, they told us houses, small houses or shanties, with those satellite dishes, satellite dishes, mostly of them are child pornography 
areas or houses. Ang dami daw po niyan. Abortion. Abortion here is not legal, but there are a lot of abortions happening here in the Philippines. Just type in the internet, abortion in the Philippines, and you will see a lot of it. Drugs. What is St. Paul telling us? Consecrate our lives to the Lord so that each and every one of us, most especially the young, would know how life-giving and life-receiving is the gift of oneself. Not to compromise our commitment to our Lord Jesus Christ and not to insist on my rights that would hurt others. When we consecrate ourselves, which we did as a community in 2014, when we consecrated Corpus for Christ to our dear mother, blessings upon blessings came upon us. We were strengthened. Mga kapatid, brothers and sisters, let us consecrate ourselves to our Lord Jesus Christ to be strengthened, to be used by our Lord Jesus Christ, and to find joy. I have a share of brothers and sisters. She, uh, she is coming from uh, Couples for Christ or uh, Youth for Christ Bahrain. I would like you to strain your ears as you hear her. I think she's here right now. My share is Pauline Ikin. Pauline? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Pauline Aiken from CRC Bahrain, and I'm here to share about how we experience God's greatest love for me and my family. As you noticed, I am I have a hard time in speaking and walking in physical, my physical motors. I was, when I was born, I was diagnosed with meconium stain. And where the doctor told my parents that it was severe, that I won't be able to, I won't be able to walk, I won't be able to talk at all. But as I was growing up, of course, I, um, in my childhood, I felt I felt I was out of place, I was bullied, I was feeling left out, but that did not stop me from going to the activities of the kids until the Youth for Christ. My parents were the member of the community since I was born, which is 22 years now. And <laughs> since then, they were household leaders. They were serving the church. They were um, helping other people. And as a CLC baby, I, I was going with them 
to the activities, to the household teachings and every, every activity. And I would always hear the community in Bahrain praying for me. So, I, two years ago, they were asked to, they were asked to level up to become a unit leader. So of course, there was hesitation, there was doubts and fears that they had. And they were scared to, to leave me behind. But somehow, I'm thinking that I would be the hindrance for them to accept the leadership. So I thought to myself that this time should be the right time for them to offer it to the Lord. <laughs> I encouraged them to accept the leadership. I told them, Mapa, it's your time to accept this leadership because you never know what blessings would come to you and our family. I'm and I told them, I will be okay at home. I'm already 20. I'm... I will support you in everything that you will do. I will give it back to the community. So, nevertheless, blessings came immediately. <laughs> the blessing was my mom met a CFC, SFC sister in a household who happens to work for a doctor, a neurologist. And she, she off, when my mom shared about my case, she offered us to go to her, her doctor for free consciousness for free checkup. When he went to the doctor, this doctor is a really God's gift because this doctor never gave up on me. He helped me until I had confidence in myself. In myself. And what, what, what amazing was my dear titos and titas, this doctor offered his help without asking anything in return. Alongside, this doctor encouraged me to move on with my life. He encouraged me to go continue my studies, go on with life, don't be depressed. So I, d I, I then decided to come here to the Philippines to do higher education. So when I came here, of course, um, I had a, a school. I, I targeted the school. So when we went there, we were honest about my condition. And um, 
sorry to say, but this school was kind of turned uh, turned me down, and I felt rejected. I felt judged. And then I continued praying to the Lord until before I we went to a lot of schools. I nearly gave up. I continued praying to the Lord. And finally, we went, we found a school, my current school, St. Paul. In St. Paul, I was um, accepted, I was not judged, I felt welcomed. And in short, my dear titos and titas, God's, God's love never really ends. He continues to love us because He gives us challenge and later on we will realize why we, why we had this challenge. Because when I believe every sacrifice, God will return it as a blessing. So what I believe, God will bless all of us. He will never abandon us. For, for that, may God be praised. Thank you very much, Pauline. Thank you. Thank you. That is Pauline Ikin. She, brothers and sisters, was able to talk just two years ago. Just two years ago, because of that therapy, because her parents accepted that being a unit head. Right now in St. Paul, St. Paul is the second in her class. Rejected in another school because they thought she was good for nothing. But in St. Paul, she's one of the best. Brothers and sisters, that is how God works. In whatever physical condition you think you are, God will use you powerfully. Last year, you have heard Brother Makoy. I hope you remember him. The unit head. We think, that's nothing. A unit head, yes. But a unit head in Corpus for Christ who is blind. Brothers and sisters, God will use you. God will use us. We just need to surrender ourselves to Him. He will use us powerfully, just like how He used Pauline to convince His parents to become and accept that leadership position in Couples for Christ. There are just two things that the Lord is telling us, as St. Paul is asking us, for us to be able to have that new spirit in Christ. First thing is for us to seek God always. To seek God always. Just like in the story of, uh, uh, in Luke, the Emmaus walk. The disciples were going home without hope. It's as if the light has been extinguished. Nothing. But as they were walking, going to the Emmaus, Jesus Christ joined them and explained to them what the scripture says. You know, towards the end, didn't, didn't they say, 
Weren't our hearts burning as we were listening to Him? Brothers and sisters, let our hearts continue to burn daily as we come before the Lord, Lord seeking Him in prayer and as we read the Bible. Let that fire continue to burn. Don't let it be extinguished, brothers and sisters. And secondly, the last slide that I have is for us to call upon the Holy Spirit. It is His presence, brothers and sisters, that has made and will make couples for Christ an unstoppable force. We are 36 years and there's still 36 or 50 or 100 years more for couples for Christ in years and years to come. But if we need and if we want to continue, let us call always call upon the Holy Spirit. A fire that inflames other fires. A fire from the Holy Spirit is a fire that doesn't burn or, doesn't, or, or hurt, but gives unexplainable, eternal peace and joy. And I would like to read this coming from St. Irenaeus. By His coming, Christ brought with Him all newness. This is a new year for couples for Christ. And we need to come before our Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit to, if, to freshen us, to bring newness to our community. For the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ, as written in Evan Evangelic Godium number 11, the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ brings not only newness, but more so empowerment of new ways, new approaches, and new expressions to, the day, to today's world. Every form of authentic evangelization is always new. Brothers and sisters, with those statements, it makes me want to live every day in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thus, brothers and sisters, may I ask each and every one, to come before the presence of the Lord. Better, may I ask each and every one to stand, please. As we sing this song, may I ask you to please open up your mind, your ears, your hearts, offer it to the Lord and consecrate it to the Lord. Let that fire burn in us. This, initially, brothers and sisters, this song is written in Spanish. But I know every one of us could understand Spanish. Sing with us. As we come before His presence.
Thank you very much for this wonderful day that you've given to us. As you send the Holy Spirit to each and every one. But I come before you in prayer. As we pray this beautiful song about the Holy Spirit. Oh Holy Spirit, breathe in each and every one of us here. So that our thoughts, my thoughts, and the thoughts of my brothers and sisters may, may be holy. Oh Holy Spirit, act in me, act in my brother, act in my sister, act in each and every one of us so that our works the works of couples for Christ will be holy. O oh Holy Spirit, may I ask you to please draw our hearts, draw our hearts together. Draw our hearts closer to our God. So that our love, my love for each and every one, my love for the community, my love for my spouse, my love for my children, my love for the work, the service that you do, would likewise be holy. Oh, Holy Spirit, may I ask you, because of our weaknesses, strengthen each and every one of us here. Yes, despite of our iniquities, may we ask you to strengthen us that we may be able to defend our faith. We may be able to defend you. In His most holiness. But most Holy Spirit, may I ask that you guard each and every one of us, our loved ones, everything of who we are. Guide it, O oh Lord, so that everything about me, everything of who I am, everything that I do, would always be holy. Lord, please hear our prayers and send the Holy Spirit upon us as we continue singing. El Espíritu de Dios está en este lugar. Está aquí para consolar, está aquí para liberar, está aquí para guiar, el Espíritu de Dios está en mí. Muévete en mí, muévete en mí, toca mi mente. de tu amor muévete en mí Dios Espíritu muévete en mí The Spirit of God is
to send your dear mother upon us, our dear mother Mary, that he may journey with us in this life, journey every moment in this life, O oh Lord, holding our hands, that whenever we may stumble and fall, she is there ready to pick us up and leading and pointing us to your way. And as we call upon her, as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God be praised, brothers and sisters.
And now to give the second session entitled Stand Firm in the Faith. Let's give a round of applause to our CFC Chairman, Brother Joe Talley. Buenas tardes, hermanos y hermanas. <laughs> okay, we honor our brethren uh, from South America and, of course, uh, from Zamboanga. Good afternoon. May I just quickly check yung bang sound? Is it better there in the uh, in the general admission area? Praise be to God. Okay, brothers and sisters, we know our anchor verse this year, we know our theme, but maybe just to start, let us all read this together. Okay. Did you bring your own Bibles? <laughs> Can we have the slide, please? Okay, maybe I'll just read it. Again, from 1 Corinthians 16, 13 to 14. Okay, together, be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. Your every act should be done with love. Brothers and sisters, as the International Council was discerning for the theme, and this verse came out, I'm, I think, I'm sure that many of us were actually wondering what will be in store for us in 2017? Why did the Lord lead us to this verse? This verse that has many meanings, but one thing is clear. The Lord wants us to be faithful. The Lord wants us to be firm. The Lord wants us to look at what's going on in the world, what's going on in, in the country, and to be alert, to be on guard, not to be complacent. But of course, the Lord assures us, like in the last phrase, let us do everything. You are to do everything. We are to do everything in love. But we cannot help but begin to continue to reflect and continue to observe the Lord does not give us a theme which does not mean anything. The Lord wants us to truly be on guard. The Lord wants us to observe. The Lord wants us to be aware that even as we grow in couples for Christ, even as we grow in number, even as we grow in our puzzle formation, the evil one continues to lurk and continues to try to destroy whatever the Lord is doing in the community. And as we saw in the video, there are many things going on. And indeed, we believe that there, because there are many serious challenges to our faith today, but somehow we in CFC are called upon to do our part to stand firm in the faith and influence many more to do the same. In the first session, we were reminded more specifically to be on guard against many things, some common things that we sometimes uh, substitute for God like wealth and pleasure and power and honor. But as we are 
as we are uh, asked to be alert, we also know that it is not a passive kind of being just on guard. We are also called to do something very positive. And that is for us to be effective Catholics and Christians. We have to really stand firm in our faith. Now let us look at this phrase more closely. There can be many explanations about faith, and we will not go into that this afternoon. But perhaps we know that at the base, at the core of our faith, is really our yearning, our holy longing for God. Our lives are not complete without the Lord. We long for Him. And this, I believe, is the, the core of the beginnings of our expressions of our faith. Now, Pope Francis, in his homily, just recently, in the uh, Solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord, in the Vatican Basilica, January 6th, says this. A holy longing for God wells up in the hearts of believers because they know that the gospel is not an event of the past but of the present. It continues to be so relevant today. It is true and it is true today. A holy longing for God helps us keep alert in the face of every attempt to reduce and impoverish our life. Pag meron pong mga gawain na nakadiminis ng the value of life, that is when we are called to even long for God to be present, to be here, to guide, and to lead us. A holy longing for God is actually the memory of faith. Which, this memory of faith which rebels before all prophets of doom. Kaya po, kahit anong sasabihin ng marami mga pessimistic na, because of our Lord, because of our faith, we go against those prophets of doom. It is also this longing, brothers and sisters, that keeps hope alive in the community of believers, which from week to week, especially, we continue to plead, Come, Lord Jesus. Of course, marami sigurong paraan, there are many ways to look at and to reflect on this phrase. But a good starting point is to see what can be encompassed uh, by this phrase, stand firm in the faith. The first is that before we can stand firm in the faith, we must of course know what our faith is. We must deepen our knowledge of our faith. Let me quote from this book entitled The Faith Alive at uh, the Faith Applied by Jean Daujad. He says, In order to live as Christians, we must realize what Christianity is. In order to live as good Catholics, we must know what being Catholic means. So this is a pressing need. For unless the modern Christians or Catholics has a proper knowledge of doctrine, he will not escape the influence of world trends of thought. It is important, brothers and sisters, that before we can truly stand firm in our faith, 
that we must have the proper knowledge of the doctrine of the faith. Secondly, as we know our faith, as we know the doctrines, we must make sure that we apply these doctrines, we must, we must apply the aspects of our faith to our everyday life. There is no much sense standing firm for our faith if our faith remains in the level of our intellect or the level of theory. As we know our faith, we must make sure this affects our lives. That we do not keep the faith only when we are in church on Sunday. At iwana lang doon. And that's it. We cannot just allow that our faith is limited to when we meet in prayer meetings and assemblies. At hanggang doon na lang. That when we go out after the meeting or assembly, we forget about the faith. It is something that we must continuously apply to our everyday life. Thirdly, we must proclaim this faith. We must proclaim what this faith means to us and to all. I think we continue to be familiar with this passage from Matthew 28, which is uh, our basic verse when we give our evangelization training. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. By God's grace, brothers and sisters, we in Couples for Christ have taken this verse to heart, have allowed it, this verse, to guide our lives in community, which is the reason why now we gather as leaders from many areas, not only from the Philippines, but from all around the world. We must continue this so that we can really stand even more firm in our faith. As we proclaim the faith, our hearts, our minds, our whole being are also strengthened in this. Finally, mga kapatid, to be able and part of standing firm in the faith, is that we are actual witness, witnesses. Witnesses, we witness to our faith. Again, similar to what we said earlier, we bring our faith wherever we are. We bring our faith to our jobs. It's like uh, Brother Willie shared earlier in the worship. We bring our faith to our schools. We bring our faith to our neighborhoods by the actions we take. Actions, as they, as we also commonly know, it says, we, it speaks louder than words. Because our words of proclaiming will be empty if we don't do what we proclaim. The faith applied also says this, expresses it this way. The molding of Christians who live Christianity, Christians who live Christianity, is the urgent business of today. Therefore, we have to train all Christians for an integral Christian life where every fiber of our being is steeped in Christianity. Again, the words that come out of our mouth must express our faith, our actions, 
must express our faith. And we need to be constantly aware of this, brothers and sisters. Because today, the greater need is not for people who can talk. The greater need is for Christians who live out their faith. The greater need is for witnesses of the faith. Because we can talk all we want, pag hindi po nakikita, if it is not seen in our actions, it is useless. This is the urgent business of today, as this author says. Now, how can we do our part in responding to this call? There are I'll share some practical ways that we can do to respond. Of course, there are many ways of expressing this, but I'd like to just focus on, on two words. First is live out one's covenant our covenant in CFC and we must also seek to grow in certain virtues live out one's CFC covenant over time brothers and sisters we might grow complacent over time we might think we've read this covenant so many times we know what this is all about but brothers and sisters I suggest for the entire community this year especially as we as we respond to the call of the Lord for us to be to stand firm in the faith to take time to review and revisit our covenant First, you must have your covenant. <laughs> First, you must carry your covenant everywhere. And let's just take a few moments to, to review what are the main points of our covenant. Not in the actual words that is there, but first, it's a consistent personal prayer and scripture time. I know that sometimes you hear this so many times and it comes in one ear and goes out the other, but I believe, brothers and sisters, that today more than ever, we must really be faithful to this. Secondly, Let us continue with this gift that the Lord has given us in CFC to have regular dialogue with our spouse and with our children. This also affects the focus that we would like to have in community to really have family evangelization. As we proclaim the word of God to many families and strengthen them, we must make sure that we don't leave our family aside. And therefore, the time really to make sure that one-on-ones with our spouse, one-on-ones with our children is part of our life in CFC. We might not be 100% here, but we must make sure that we try our best, that we, uh, that we uh, uh, you know, put it even in our calendar, in our planner, just like what we have in the CFC planner. If you have not seen it yet, kailangan nakalagay doon, you don't only plan and put in your talks to give, your meetings, make sure that it is also in the plan kung kailan yung ating one-on-ones with our spouse and with our children.
Amen? Because sometimes it can get lost in the many things that we are doing. Third, let us be faithful to this, brothers and sisters. Again, the household is a gift to CFC and many outside CFC have expressed their admiration for Corpus for Christ because of our faithfulness to household meetings. In our meetings with potential partners and when we ask them why is it that you are interested in having CFC as your partner, they cite this. It is because your faith is not just a once a week you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the church for us, that is important, of course. But it is because you are faithful beyond that. And this strengthens our faith. This allows us to stand firm in our faith. So make sure that the household is something that is done faithfully. And that we are to attend our meetings faithfully. It's very possible that because of the many demands of our time, this is something that we might say, not, not, not this week, but strive to be faithful brothers and sisters. That goes for our assemblies and for our other events. Next, please. Serve. I believe as we are all leaders, we are serving. But make sure also that we truly take on the posture of a servant, a shepherd. Service is not about entitlements. Service is really Leading, as Archbishop Arguelles also said earlier, and leading those who have been assigned to us to where? Leading everyone to God and in the process, leading those who we are privileged to lead to heaven eventually. And as I've said this before in some teachings, teaching nights that perhaps I call on all the household heads that when we go home from our household meetings that we also ask ourselves as household heads have I led my household closer to God because of our recent household meeting. There, are, there might be some, you know, other benchmarks, but ultimately, this is what we are called to do, brothers and sisters. Finally, we must continue to grow in our faith. Make sure that we continue to really seek more learnings about our faith, that we read materials, that we grow in the many aspects of our faith to be a better Christian, a better Catholic as we continue in our journey here in CFC, to be a better Christian person. Now, brothers and sisters, there is much to really learn if we sincerely reflect on our covenant. In addition, we can take a look at certain virtues that we ask for the grace to grow in. And here we will be quoting from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. The virtue of prudence from CCC or again 
Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1806. Prudence is doing right in reason in every action that we do things with not just, uh, you know, um, uh, off the cuff, we just don't do things uh, uh, by, by, uh, by pure instinct. But we pray and we ask for the Lord's guidance about the right reason in every action that we do. Second virtue is justice. Justice is defined many many ways, but essentially it is giving everyone else his due, being fair. And we pray because of the we know many challenges in our lives today that we have this moral virtue that is constant in giving others their due. The just man is distinguished by habitual right and right thinking and being upright in the conduct towards neighbor. Fortitude. This moral value ensures firmness, especially in difficult times. The grace not to give up, the grace to have the firmness even in challenges. This virtue will allow us to face and conquer our fears. Even the fear of death. The ability, the grace to face trials and persecutions even. And not to be discouraged, not to escape, but to face our challenges firmly. Fourth virtue is temperance. This is the virtue that moderates the attraction of pleasure and provides balance in the use of created goods. This virtue ensures the mastery of the will over instincts and keeps whatever desires we might have within the limits of what is honorable. Perhaps worded this way, we need to, over, the, over this year, get to know a little bit better how this will specifically apply in our everyday lives. Having known these brothers and sisters, we are thankful to the Lord first for the blessings of the past year, 2016. The Lord has blessed us with so many. And while we cannot mention everything, I'd like to just focus on the new uh, uh, gifts that the Lord allowed us in CFC to experience last year. One, one gift, of course, is our Pluma TV series. We're able to watch the Pluma programs, brothers and sisters. Okay, it doesn't sound so uh, uh, <laughs> numerous. So, tamang tama. Because the other gift that the Lord gave us last year is for us to have a constructive response. A, contract, a constructive response to the problems of today. Drug addiction. The Lord bless us with the project reform. And I'd like to honor Brother Arnel Santos and the core group of project reform. Where are they? Can we have some house lights on? 
Brother Arnel and Sister Bing quietly they serve without fanfare but with all seriousness and faithfulness. So since many of you have not seen Pluma, I will call my share today in this talk a couple who, are, who appeared in Pluma in one of the episodes and they will share through the medium of television. So let us now roll the video on a portion of our episode of Pluma featuring Michael and Ami Lobrigo. May I will witnessing to our presence. Bagamat sa puso ko, may alam kong may Diyos sa puso ko eh, pero ayaw ko siyang kilalanin talagang hindi ko matanggap talaga yung nangyari sa buhay ko na kung may Diyos, bakit ganito yung naging takbo ng buhay ko. Yung pagiging adik ko sa droga nung panahon na yun, parang napalitan ng pagiging adik ko naman sa salita ng Diyos, sa mga gawain espiritual. Ako po si Mikey Lubrigo, isang pintor sa isang construction company at uh, member ako ng Copper Sport Christ. Naglilingkod din ako sa Our Lady of the Abandon ng Santa Ana bilang isang lay minister. Grade 4 ako nun, nung nagiwala yung magulang ko. Hanggang sa iniwan kami ng aming tatay. Tapos, Mga dalawang taon lang, asawa naman yung nanay ko at sumama siya doon sa asawa niya. Inisip ko noon kung may Diyos, bakit tumabot sa ganun yung buhay namin? Kababata ko siya. Dito na po kami lumaki yung dalawa. Tapos, yun, di, di namin nakalain na kami mag-aasawa yung dalawa. Malilit pa kami kasi dito nga kami. Tapos nung nasa Pampanga ako, pabalik-balik ako rito, nagkin, nagkikita kami dyan. Nagbarkada muna. Naglarulik kami ng mga bata-bata pa rin. Pero ano, namasyal na. Hanggang sa nung one time, nagtapat ako ng pandiligaw sa kanya, nag nanood kami ng sini. Yan, doon nagsimula yung relasyon namin. Nung panahon na yun, Kaya ami ko lang naman nakita na parang may halaga ako sa kanya. Kaya sabi ko siguro ito yung babaeng makakaintindi sa akin. 180 pa lang minimum noon. Pero sa droga, pwede ka nang kumita ng sa isang araw ng 2,000. Noong una, hindi hindi ko pakilala yung droga. Ganun po yung pakiramdam pag naka-droga, nakapagsyabu eh. Ay, tsura ko nun, grabe, hindi ko ma... Pag nakikita ko ngayon yung mga picture ko nung, nung time na nagdodroga ako, hindi ko makilala, parang hindi ako eh. Sa kahirapan, namili siya, naingaan niyo po. Yan nga po yung pagbabago niya na hindi ko na siya nakilala na asawa ko na po siya. Naging normal sa amin yun, pero one time na... Nung nag-akyatan yung mga barkada ko, nandun yung, yung panganay na anak ko, malit pa siya nun. Siguro mga 4 years old pa lang siya nun, 5 years old ganun. Siguro ginamita lang din siya ng Diyos nun na bigla siyang nagtanong sa akin. Ang sabi niya, Papa, tatabo ka na naman. Pakiramdam ko nun, para bang nauubusan ako ng lakas na para akong kandilang nakaupos na hindi ko maintindihan. Apartment yan. Ano, pala yan? ano pa yan? Plaza? Our, we apologize to our foreign uh, brothers and sisters. We don't have the uh, English subtitles here. But maybe uh, just to summarize what their story is, and by the way, they are here. Can we 
ask Michael and Ami Lubrigo to please stand. So, ito po sila. Maybe wave your hand a bit so we know you. Okay. The story of Michael and Ami is that both of them were drug addicts and pushers. But they were invited to join a Christian life program in Santa Ana. They were very reluctant to go in the venue, but the team leader sort of saw them looking in and invited them in. At first they didn't want because they thought those who were inside for the CLP were only people who had means and they were poor. But the team leader was very welcoming and so they got in. And after they attended the CLP and became CFC, their household head also had the patience to really mentor them and guide them and pastor them. So that eventually they were able to get rid of drug addiction. But I'm not sure if you noticed, Brother Michael, from being a drug pusher, is now a lay minister in the church. This goes to show brothers and sisters, and there are many more examples, that it's possible to change. It's possible to transform your lives for as long as you put God in the center of your life. We have a solution. That's why we also stand in condemning extrajudicial killings. No personalities here. But as Christians, for us to really be true to our faith, we must stand up and condemn the killings that are going on. Whether it is done by the vigilantes, or maybe by the police, or whoever, it doesn't matter. We are not talking about politics. We are talking about morality and being true to our faith to condemn killings of all kind. Amen? Amen? And we have shown that there are better solutions. So, coming from that, brothers and sisters, what is stand, in the, stand firm in the faith for us this year, 2017? We would like to give these directions to the community. Can we have the slide, please? Okay. You might remember that last year, we, be, uh, we gave basic directions, twofold direction. Strengthen the core and expand the reach. We are not just setting that aside. We just don't make pronouncements and forget, it about, forget about it in the next year. Our priorities for this year, brothers and sisters, related or continuing with the strength in the core, is for, first is to stand firm in the faith, which is what our theme is. And there are many things that we can cover here, but let me cite key directions here. One is catechism. We hope that we truly go all out in catechism, first with our members. We cannot assume that everyone knows the faith. Now, when we talk about catechism, 
let us be creative also how to present this and there are many ways of doing this without losing the substance for example I'm not sure if all of you are aware that we have a booklet on catechism geared for the youth produced by Ablaze and if you don't have copies I suggest we that you get copies of this it is a very youth friendly kind of catechism also we can continue to search and research how better to proclaim the doctrines in our faith in a creative way of course there uh, we you know there are many ways to do this but maybe a sample of what we can do to present catechism in a creative way and we have the video please <clears throat>
This is just an example, and I think with uh, a lot more uh, uh, study and diligence, we, will, we can come up with really making catechism uh, something that is uh, attractive and we'll, we'll, have a, uh, we'll have a place in the hearts of many of those that we are evangelizing, particularly the young. And may, may I emphasize that this is such an important part of our faith that we must know so we can know how to stand firm in this faith. And it is, uh, I, I share this, that uh, some years ago, a, a Jesuit priest in our teaching night has provided statistics how a diminishing percent of the Catholic population, especially among the young, it's diminishing, the number is diminishing as to those who have taken formal catechism. And when the young do not take catechism, we will have a future of many Catholics who don't know their faith. And so we must also take the effort to make sure that we do our part in this, uh, uh, in, in this aspect of our faith. Okay, part of standing firm in the faith, part, part of knowing our faith, we'd like to share with you brothers and sisters that the council is finalizing discussions that we can make a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, something that we will aspire for as a community that maybe all, all our leaders have the opportunity to visit the Holy Land and walk in the land where Jesus walked and understand our faith better. And I'd like to just mention, we have with us here Father Carlos Santos. Father Carlos. Father Carlos went back to Israel. Father Carlos was here earlier, but he is our spiritual advisor in Israel. And he has kindly also uh, volunteered himself that we can really plan a pilgrimage that since most of it he will do in Israel, hopefully we can have a, a, a cost that is uh, more affordable because we won't do this for profit, but we will do this as part of our formation in CFC. And before you can talk about, oh, but it's expensive, and so forth and so on, brothers and sisters, I'd like to honor our leaders from South A. If you're here, please stand. If there's a will, there's a way. Our South A leaders made it their desire to visit the Holy Land. And it was a two-year preparation to save. And the savings were monitored every month. So that in two years, everybody had saved enough for them to spend for this Holy Land pilgrimage. I'm sure we all can do that, brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. Let's pray to the Lord for that. And really, as Catholics, as Christians, we have to have this uh, uh, yearning and longing in our hearts that one day in our lifetime, we will be able to really see and be there that what is written in the gospel, it is not just a story. The places are real. The people were real. And we have a God who really came down to, to earth to be with us, to be able to save us. And so we hope, let's all pray for these brothers and sisters. And maybe some of you may recall we had our first pilgrimage a few years back. Um, a few years back, okay. 
but we would like to continue what uh, the council then through brother Joyo Mumoto also spearheaded at the time. Okay, so that, those are the key things in our standing firm in the faith to know our faith better. In the area of partly of strengthening the core, one of our priorities this year was, will really be leadership, spirituality, and development. A continuing preparation for how, to have more leaders ready to take on responsibilities as we continue this journey in Couples for Christ. And we are grateful to the Lord that many of our leaders have stepped up, have leveled up in their own service. We thank the Lord for that. But in order to, to help in this area, we will have, of course, we will have the leadership course be a program with the Copos for Christ Institute or the CFC Institute so that there's, this will be a continuing program just like what we had launched last year of Missions 101. So hopefully through this and many other connecting uh, uh, programs, we will be able to help the community move on with a base, with a good base, a good bench of leaders who can take on the service that will be required. Here, this course will probably focus on the, on the skills part, but of course, as a leader, as a servant, that is only one aspect. What we must make sure and what is important is really the heart, the heart of a servant, the heart that will know it's needed to go the extra mile and even another mile because in our service with the Lord we will be asked we will be tasked to do more and give more of ourselves for him but we need to also give some uh, extra focus on that this year next please in the area of expanding the reach we continue with our family evangelization we continue with our evangelization there should be no let up but for this year we'd also like to focus on on family evangelization and what does this mean we focus on uh, like the family enrichment retreat that it is while we evangelize individuals we also would like to give a lot more content to evangelizing and allowing the families to grow and be renewed even more strongly so we have this family enrichment retreat but we would like to make it even uh, because it's not i know it's not been uh, done very regularly we hope to do a lot more of it Family evangelization will also mean, brothers and sisters, that we take the extra effort and prayer that all of our family members will belong to the community. As parents, let us pray that we can bring our children to the community. And we will call on our young ministries, the Youth for Christ, the Singles for Christ, if their parents are not yet in CFC, that we will also have some programs to bring their parents to CFC so that indeed it can be the entire family serving in community. Okay, one thing that the Lord has opened to us, not just last year but even a few years back, is gateway evangelization. And we would like to honor those who have continued in uh, gateway evangelization gateway evangelization is evangelization but not quite membership in cfc this is evangelization that uh, will be we will have sort of a pre uh, a pre program a pre clp program which is what the order of saint michael is doing it's not straight to the clp but the program of character enhancement 
and we found this way of approach quite effective so that when we get to invite them to the CLP, they are they're more ready in their hearts. This is also something that the uh, migrants program has been doing, but hope that as we do this gateway evangelization, hopefully in the, in the near future that will lead into their being formally part of CFC through a Christian life program. ANCOP is one area that is, that is r really ripe for this. And we are doing, we have been doing this and we need to maybe to accelerate or, or intensify this effort of gateway evangelization in our work with the poor. That goes also with our social development programs. I mentioned already project reform, but you know, STMA and uh, OICOS and um, uh, our, our programs in education, CSP and um, Cornerstone, the prison ministry and so forth. These are, let's look at this not really as uh, strictly programs, but these are really opportunities to evangelize. And sometime within this first quarter, we will also share with you the interesting and inspiring statistics of how many have been reached by the gateway evangelization. So that when you add that to our regular evangelization, we actually have responded uh, to the Lord's call for us to go forth and evangelize, brothers and sisters. Media. Last year, we have seen how the Lord blessed us with a TV program. For a start, in the biggest network, television network in the country. And Pluma was a blessing. And Pluma, even if it was just the start of our television experience, have proven to be a good way of evangelization. Some of you might not know that even if our time in Pluma is at early morning 5.30, and maybe many of you are not awake yet at the time. Pero marami din sa ating mga kapatid nagising na. So maybe we can go back to that old adage of early to bed and early to rise. So we will have to make adjustments in our household meetings. So that we, we, we end earlier. But brothers and sisters, even in the time slot of 5.30, we have been blessed with, you know, actual, actual statistics that we have been one of those that have the highest viewership in that time slot of 5.30. And it's actually good that it flows into the mass, the television mass. And I can cite many examples, but maybe since our brethren from Canada are here, uh, one of the feedback was that one of our leaders from uh, Edmonton, oh, he was uh, relaxing one Sunday uh, and watching television in Edmonton, I think because of TFC, there are, there's a replay in the afternoon. So our brother was watching in one afternoon. and. His phone rang, and when he answered the phone, it was, it was quite interesting because the one who called asked him if he was the leader of CFC in that area in Edmonton. And when he said yes, and he asked why, the, the caller said, because I've just seen your pluma. And because of what I see, what I've seen, I would like to be a member of Couples for Christ. Brothers and sisters, you might not know it, but hindi lang po CFC ang nanonood ng pluma. If you recall the time that we had the Angkop Global Walk, here when most of us were there walking, and we were quite concerned that maybe no one will watch pluma because everybody was there in the walk, but we were 
pleasantly surprised that even for that episode, we had retained a high viewership of Pluma. That means it wasn't only CFC that is watching Pluma, but many more. And what a tool for evangelization, brothers and sisters. And to add to our efforts in media, we will, we're finalizing, and hopefully we can begin a regular radio program beginning, beginning February 1. And this is with Radio Veritas, and this is every day, Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And we hope to maximize this opportunity to really proclaim the goodness of the Lord, to really proclaim our faith through radio, which has also a high listenership uh, uh, following. Okay? So this is what we hope we can do in terms of gateway evangelization. Finally, a fifth priority this year is greater parish involvement. I know and we know that you are active in your parishes. Are you? Okay. There's more conviction there, huh? And, but what we'd like to do is even improve, even increase that involvement, and particularly for this year, the year of the parish, we hope to be involved in addition to what we already are in, we hope to be involved more in the BEC or the basic ecclesial communities. And this is what our clergy has been asking for. This is one area where we have not been very deliberate, but we thank that we have uh, Brother Jun Simon and Sister Mavic who are faithfully engaged in the BEC in their parish in Santa Quiteria in uh, Novaliches, right? And can we recognize Jun Simon? Is he still there? Uh, there is Brother Jun Simon. Because of their experience in their parish in the BEC, we have formed a core group to help all of you to also do this in your parishes. So those who might want to know more about it, uh, we will be able to uh, support this effort even more. And so, brothers and sisters, of course, we can include many of the things that we are doing and what we would like to do this year, but these are the key thrusts. And if I may summarize the five thrusts for 2017, our first is stand firm in the faith, two, leadership, spirituality and development. Third is family evangelization. Fourth is gateway evangelization. And fifth is greater parish involvement. As we do all of these things, we believe that this truly contributes concretely to our theme of standing firm in the faith. Okay, just by way of conclusion. Maybe we can ask the music ministry to, to begin to be ready. Brothers and sisters, the call for us to stand firm in the faith is not easy and will not be easy and we know that. That's why also in this verse from 1 Corinthians, the Lord assures us, or the Lord also directs us, rather, to be strong and courageous. And in CFC, we have experienced many occasions that we've been called upon to really show being strong and courageous. And this is because we have heard and we know from way back that when we joined CFC, it was not just joining a 
family renewal movement, but of course it is. But beyond that, the Lord is also really asking us, have asked us to, to form God's army. And we have been privileged to be part of God's army. And I believe, brothers and sisters, that this year, especially with our faith, especially our theme of standing firm in the faith, we are called to reaffirm our commitment to be God's army. Are you with me here, brothers and sisters? Yes. And just like in the days of Joshua, the Lord assured Joshua in, one, in Joshua 1 verse 9, he says, I command you, be strong and steadfast. Do not fear nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Brothers and sisters, what an assurance of the Lord that He will be with us wherever we go. He will be with us in whatever situation. And when He commands us to be strong and steadfast, He will be there. He asks us not to be dismayed nor be fearful because He will be there. He is our commander-in-chief in this army. And so, brothers and sisters, I invite all of us to be, to reaffirm our commitment to be part of God's army and to follow our commander-in-chief, to follow his words, to follow his teachings, to know our faith, and to stand firm there. He actually gives us a choice. So let us take his words to heart, brothers and sisters. It is time also as we face the challenges of 2017 to make a recommitment. And we do so, as we do so, may we follow Joshua's response, Joshua's commitment, and also make it our own. What did Joshua say during those times? He said in Joshua 24, verse 15, he told the entire Israelites, and in very clear words, he said, if it is displeasing to you to serve the Lord, sabi niya, choose today whom you will serve the gods of your ancestors who serve beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are dwelling. Choose. And Joshua concluded, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Brothers and sisters, may we be one and united as God's army who will stand firm in the faith. Are we ready for this, brothers and sisters? If so, let's all stand up and as our way of recommitting, sing this song with our music ministry.
Brothers and sisters, are we still good? Okay, to give the last talk entitled Faithful to Love to the End, please welcome the PFE Director of CFC, Brother Roquel Ponte. Good evening, brothers and sisters. I said good evening because it's almost 10 to 6. But I've heard from our event head that we have extended our time here. And, you know, all of the good things that we've heard this afternoon are truly a gift from God. You know? And I believe that we also can receive that gift, especially as we have that faithful love that is instilled in us and how we want to share that faithful love with others. Hence, the title of the last session for this afternoon is Faithful Love to the End. And allow me to begin. Uh, when Nina and I attended a semi-directed retreat last year, together with our uh, staff in the Global Mission Center, our facilitator at the time said, towards the end of the retreat, ask for a pamaon. Ask for a takeaway or a take-home gift from the Lord Himself. Because we are just here as facilitators, but it is God Himself who has directed this retreat. No? And on the way home, she sa akin Nina kung yung binigay sa kanya ni Lord. No? And so, during the time of prayer, the Lord thou approach her and then in the hands of the Lord was a heart a heart that is a fire a heart that is a flame and the Lord directed his words to her by saying here is a pure heart which is a pure love being given to you I'm sure in many of our retreats and events we get gifts from the Lord, no? And we have this takeaway, pabaon uh, from the Lord. And this afternoon, I believe the Lord is here, and the Lord will give us that same faithful love that has given to our community all these years. But who is this faithful God that we have? Well, Pope Francis, it is encyclical of 2006, Deus Caritas S that we have a God who is love. A God who is pure love. A God who is a faithful God who will love us until the end. And surely, this is what we have been experiencing in the life and mission of the community of Copos for Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, Copos for Christ, after more than 35 years, has always moved according to the Holy Spirit's prompting. In fact, this year, the Corpus for Christ Institute, together with the Blaze Publications, came out with a book, Moved by the Holy Spirit. And this is a story, not just of one person, or one couple, or one family, but this is a story of our community. And the introduction page that I wrote for this book, I said that everyone has a story to tell. And that story is all about God's love. God's faithful love that has been through us given all these years in our community. And yet, we do have an obligation. And this obligation I read once in a book published by Henry Nowen, that talks about the first obligation of the Apostle vis-a-vis -vis the community beyond founding it is to make the faithful remember what they have received and already know or should know. So our first duty, our first obligation as leaders is not simply to be part of the first group or maybe part of the top leadership but for us, every leader in this community to make all our members 
remember the faithful love of God. And this is the essence of evangelization, my dear brothers and sisters. The faithful love of God remembered in our story, remembered in our life. And it is in remembering that we foster a grateful heart and a grateful spirit. And it is also in remembering, my dear brothers and sisters, that we can be helped in defining our true identity. It is to get ourselves better known so that we will be able to go back and deep that this identity of mine I will now pursue so that the destiny that is laid before me will be fulfilled. And this is also our contribution to the strengthening of our community life. And so I believe, my dear brothers and sisters, the reason, the very reason why I'm standing before you this afternoon or this evening is all because of God's love. And I'm sure many of us here gathered in this arena are here today because of the faithful love of God. In this book as well, we will see a bit of history, but not really a historical narration, but a history wherein it is the same Holy Spirit that inspired the first Christian community more than 2,000 years ago, animating the very same story that we have in Corpus for Christ for the last 35 years. And we begin in 1981, where the faithful love of God was given to our community when he, does, when he tasked a covenant community called Ang Ligaya ng Panginoon to begin Copos for Christ in June of 1981 with just 16 couples. And now, we're almost a million in the community of Copos for Christ. In 1985, a prophecy was given to our community and this prophecy talks about global evangelization which was almost impossible in 1985 where we the Philippines was really wallowing in hopelessness and despair but the prophecy was given it was revealed we believed in it we hoped in it and we worked for it that's why now we are in more than 110 countries. And what was this prophecy? Well, given to my wife, Nina, at that time, that Copos for Christ will win the world for Christ. We are not yet in any, any, any other country except the Philippines at that time. We were just in one province in the southern part of the Philippines, in Bukidnon. But by the grace of God, that prophecy began to take shape a year later and onwards until now. In 1991, the Lord gave us our global mandate and the vision which until now stands for our community that we are to be families in the Holy Spirit renewing the face of the earth. This is not simply a byline or a tagline or a slogan but it is truly a statement that we really believe in that all of us as families are being called to be renewing the face of the earth through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then another gift, answered prayer two years later in 1993, the gift of the family ministries. Ever since the beginning of Topos for Christ in 1981, we've been yearning to bring in our children and other members of the family into the fold. It only became real in 1993 with the birth of the family ministries. And at that time, we also became more fully submitted to the Holy Catholic Church. Two years later, in 1995, we began to answer the call for social transformation. And at that time, we said that now we are entering into that fullness of time so that the fullness of mission of, of, of our Lord Jesus Christ 
will really be on the way forward. And our mission then was building the church of the home and building the church of the poor. At the, third, at the turn of the century, at the third millennium, the great jubilee year, the year 2000, another gift from our Lord, the gift of a pontifical recognition where we were given Vatican recognition by the Pontifical Council for the laity. No? And truly, that has been affirmed over and over again, and that was made permanent in the year 2005. Come a few years later, we were battered by storms and crises. But I'm sure the Lord, who was there from the beginning of Corpus for Christ, was the very same Lord taking us by the hand and giving us guidance, direction, and empowerment. Yes, we were pained. Yes, there were some difficult relationships. But I know that in 2007 and 2009, the community became stronger as we faced the future with love and hope in our hearts. Then came 2011. The Lord gifted us with our own global mission center after 30 years of our existence. We've been renting for so many years, but now on our 30th anniversary, we moved into our permanent home in Cubao, Quezon City, now our global mission center. And then a year later, a prophecy that's been given more than five, about seven years before, we started with the Marian trilogy of our theme because it was revealed to us as well in prophecy that our community and our journey towards our destiny, we should take along our mother to bring us closer to our Lord Jesus Christ. And so God was present in the past, continues to be present today, and we hope and pray that he will forever be faithful with us into the future. Now, why did I go through this brief narration, my dear brothers and sisters? Again, it is for us to really have that desire to really be grateful to what the Lord has given to us and that we will use this desire, we will use this gratefulness so that we will make our renewed commitment for the greater honor and glory of the God who sends us and for the good of the brothers and sisters that we are supposed to evangelize. That's the first part of my talk. Now I come to the second part. What is God's call for Corpus for Christ at 35 and beyond? Allow me to use a recent apostolic exhortation, not the last one, but the previous one, Evangelii Gaudium, or the Joy of the Gospel, by the Holy Father, Pope Francis. And I'll cite this uh, number 27, Evangelii Gaudium. And I quote, I dream of a missionary option that is a missionary impulse capable of transforming everything so that the church's customs, ways of doing things, times and schedule, language and structures can be suitably channeled for the evangelization of today's modern world. This is the dream of our Holy Father, a dream that comes out of a strong commitment to make known the love of God and the mercy of God. And this dream hinges on this missionary option he calls the missionary impulse. My dear brothers and sisters, as a reminder to all of us, we belong to a missionary church and Corpus for Christ is a missionary community. And the Holy Father in these words tells us that there can be that missionary impulse capable of transforming everything. Lahat lahat. Everything. Kasi minsan, we think life is impossible right now. Especially in our own country. Sometimes we're becoming hopeless. But again, 
You have these words. If there are enough men and women imbued with a missionary spirit who is willing to stake and stand firm in the faith and even sacrifice, then that impulse, that option can transform everything irrespective of what is the present situation right now. I remember uh, in the 1960s or 70s, I don't know how many of you were part of my generation, but we had one uh, subject in our high school days at that time, American history. <laughs> we talk about American history. And there was this point in 1967 that there was one man, a black American, an Afro-American, who was who had a passion to really uplift his fellow citizens and that there would be real freedom and equality, despite the fact that more than a hundred years ago, their former president during that time already uh, uh, issued that Emancipation Proclamation. But the Afro-American were not given the same rights and privileges as the whites. And so, this man by the name of Martin Luther King Jr. made a speech, and he entitled this, I Have a Dream. No? Parallel to the dream that uh, the Holy Father probably is saying, but maybe more on a patriotic tone for one country. And he said, I have a dream that one day that my four children will live in a land where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And then he further added, I dream that one day sons of former slaves and sons of former slave owners will sit together at the table of fellowship and thereby gain brotherhood with one another. And then he ended or concluded his speech by quoting from Isaiah chapter 40 verses 3 and 5. And I think it will be flashed here right now. Yes. A voice cries out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. And then he talks about equality. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill be made low. The rugged land shall be made plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all mankind shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is a prophecy given more than 2,600 years ago. And sometimes, somehow, in many parts of the world right now, this hasn't happened yet. But we dream together with our Holy Father and the men and women, the heroes and saints that have gone before us, that we dream one day that this equality and true freedom will really happen. And it need not take a million or maybe more than a million men, maybe it will, might take only a, a few hundreds. I remember one line I read from one speech of uh, the founder of the Methodist Church, John Wesley, where he said, give me a hundred men who know only God and who will follow Jesus Christ all the way and I will set the world on fire. That's just one man. But now, my dear brothers and sisters, at this point, I'd like to call on our, just our full-time missionaries, no? together with their families. I think they're here right now, and I think they're almost numbering to a hundred or even more. So, brothers and sisters, come on stage, and let us also show our brothers and sisters in this full-packed arena the kind of response that we all have made for the glory of God and for the evangelization of the world. Led by our brother Buds and Agnes Alika from the, the Middle East. Ayan. Sige, palakpakan po natin sila lahat. Ayan.
I will not ask them to share because it will take us the whole evening. But you can see the smiling faces. You can see the small children. You can even see the babies that are asleep. No? But nevertheless, they're all here to really say that we are standing firm in our faith and that we will really fight for really the cause of Christ and to make this missionary dream come true. So once again, brothers and sisters, may I present to you, this is just part of our missionary pool in Couples for Christ. Okay. Oh, are we complete already? Akat pa, akat pa. Completo tayo dito. These are the full-time missionaries of Couples for Christ, of servants of the Lord, of handmaids of the Lord, of singles for Christ, of youth for Christ, of kids for Christ, and even babies for Christ. Yay! <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we have more than 100 men and women right here standing before you. And they have given their life and their commitment so that truly they can serve the Lord and they can serve us in the community of Corpus for Christ. Amen? Take a bow. Uh, yeah. So, exit na po sila. <laughs> Sana kinunan nyo naman ang litrato. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I said a hundred men. Here in this arena, we're more than 12,000, no? close to 15,000. Imagine if this army of 12,000 or more that we have gathered here this afternoon will make that same commitment to go out and serve the Lord and serve the community, truly this world will be on fire. Amen? Yan. Eh, tignan nyo, pagbaba lang, ang hirap na lang makababa. <laughs> I was listening also to EWTN the other evening, and it was talking about the message of Our Lady at Fatima. Uh, nabagitan ni Bishop Arguelles to kanina, that we are uh, commemorating the, the hundredth year of the apparition of Our Blessed Lady at Fatima. And there was this one commentator or share that was saying, if all Catholics just simply prayed one rosary a day for the conversion of the world, the transformation of everything that is negative that's happening now, I'm sure it will be a powerful force that will do that. If all of us who attended this leaders' conference today, January 14, will just simply commit to pray one rosary, together with our family. Truly, my dear brothers and sisters, this will be a very powerful force in transforming the world. This is one very good suggestion that I can make so that we can participate into this missionary option or missionary impulse that our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, sorry, that our Holy Father, inspired by the Holy Spirit, saying it is, in, it is capable of transforming everything. But, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, the commitment of these brothers and sisters of ours, I really honor them the same way that I honor all of you. Because all of these things that we do in community comes with pain, with suffering, and with sacrifice. I mention that because uh, yung kwento ko tungkol do sa gift ni Lord kay Nina hindi pa kompleto. Because towards uh, that part that the pulsating a flame heart was being given to Nina by our Lord, uh, our mother, blessed mother, came at the right. No? And then she took Nina's hand down and then uh, got Nina's hand, put it in her breast, and he said, Pure love comes with pain with suffering and with sacrifice. But when that pure love is really given, and when that pure love comes with pain, with 
suffering and with sacrifice comes real joy. The joy <coughs> that can only come from God. The joy of the Lord. You know? Our founding community. Ang ligaya ng Panginoon. The joy of the Lord will really be with us. The joy of the gospel, Evangelii Gaudium. The joy of love, the latest, in, uh, the latest exhortation of our Holy Father. That joy will be real as we commit more and more to the service of the Lord and to the serv- service of our church and the service of our community. And so, briefly lang, as I segue to the last part of my talk, I want us all again to focus on our theme. No? It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. My talk is basically on the last verse, verse 14. But let me just run through. Uh, because I believe all the words are very important. And in our uh, uh, strong and faithful weekend that we will have in Baguio for Metro Manila, which will be echoed uh, uh, weeks later in other provinces and other countries, then we will tackle all the issues regarding our theme for this year. But let me begin with this action word, be on your guard. Asking us not to be complacent, not to be satisfied with where we are right now, but to move ahead and conquer more territories for the Lord. To, to be able to bring the gospel of love and joy to every family that needs this. Because certainly, there is already that sense of hopelessness and despair happening all over the world. Stand firm in the faith, strongly emphasized already by the last talk. Let us believe what we believe in as Catholic Christians and as couples for Christ. Let us truly be Catholics in the real sense. I don't want to hear any politicians say that they are Catholics. But they're, they're not for life. No? That they're Catholics, but they're for same-sex union. That's not congruent. That is inconsistent with what we believe in. And so when we say, I believe, we really mean we believe, and we will really live it out in our life. Third, be courageous. Be not afraid to make known what we believe in and to fight what is right in the Lord. Issues will come our way in the next few months this year. And our faith will be tested. And our courage, courage and boldness will also be tested. Let us together embrace one another so that we will be courageous. Finally, be strong. Be in a constant state of readiness with diligent preparation. Being strong means not just physically strong, but also morally and most especially spiritually strong. That we are truly growing in holiness and in maturity. So having said that, I now come to the last part of my talk. It is all centered on the second verse of our theme. Your every act should be done in love. And love is what will sustain us until the end. Again, let me cite one number from Evangelii Gaudium. And here the Holy Father gives us three points so that there can be an applicable, a practical application rather, to what will sustain us, the faithful love to the end. This is Evangelii Gaudium 121. All of us are called to mature in our work as evangelizers. Especially as leaders, my dear brothers and sisters, we are all called to mature as evangelizers. And the Holy Father gives us three prescriptions. We want to have better training, a deepening love, and a clearer witness to the gospel. So one, better training, Two, deepening love. Three, a clearer, or as I would say, an exemplary witness to the gospel. 
Let's take them one by one. Better training. Well, the, your international council has included in one of our strategic imperatives for the year 2017 and onward, pastoral formation. And pastoral formation has two components. First are the teachings and the trainings that we all need to undergo as members and leaders of Corpus for Christ. But I believe equally or maybe more importantly as well is the pastoral care that every household leader gives or shares with his own household. The way that we help them grow in holiness, in maturity, in better relationship, and in the way that we live out our covenant. And so again, we are being challenged for this. From the pastoral standpoint of the formation directorate that I had, we have outlined all of these things that uh, I am mentioning right now. First and foremost, we have completed our pastoral formation teaching for four years and our leadership training also for the same number of years. And by the way, we also come out every year with a small booklet, no? of course, aside from many steps, a small booklet that helps us gain insight and knowledge so that we will have household topics for our household meetings. Of course, these are just suggested topics. You may also adopt your own, but we have given you 24 household topics for this. We are also giving each chapter head uh, an exhortation piece so that when he gives his exhortation and he leads the chapter prayer assembly, he has some guidance very much related to our theme. So this is how we prepared for our regular formation track. We are also moving ahead with our supplemental series track. No? I have one book that is already available. This is the first volume. No? It contains some of the things that we already have and some new things. But we have compiled it in this uh, 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 book that you can bring wherever you go and already have this as a supplemental series to the formal teaching track that we have. Next week, before we go to Baguio, we will also uh, uh, have the delivery of the second series that talks about the family enrichment retreat that Brother Joe also mentioned. There is already the first part of our parenting series, which I believe every parent, every parent here will also find beneficial. So this is really part of what we are doing in our specialized teachings. Uh, Brother Joe Tali also mentioned the mandate of the Corpus for Christ Institute. And right now, we are already offering one discipline, and that is the area of missions. This is the area of missiology. We are now currently on our third run of Missions 101, which is our basic missiology course. We are already developing the intermediate, which hopefully we can give later this year, and the advanced missiology course by next year. No. And I believe this is very important for us, especially the missionaries that we send. The current uh, 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 venue right now, the current uh, program that we have right now, has about 45 or 46 participants and they all come from all continents of, out of the world in Corpus for Christ. And I believe this will really help us a lot. But we are not just confining ourselves to mission. Because we are a family renewal ministry, the next discipline that we will have in the institute will be about family and life. No. And again, this will give us further training with resource persons, not just from our community, but even coming from the outside. The third discipline is the social teachings of the church. And again, this is very important, especially in our world today, that the lay faithful is now being called to be renewal, renewing, and transforming society. 
And how can we do that? We need to better understand the social teachings of the church. And then finally, we are also focusing on leadership and other specialized skills trainings. This will be our plan for the Institute for the next three to five years. And so again, all the manuals are there, all the teachings are there. What is just important is for us to really try to live it out in our households and in our chapter. I come to the second point, a deepening love. Let us try to deepen our love. Of course, for the Lord, first and foremost, but also love for our family. Let us grow in this. You know that the Lord has gifted me with 41 years of marriage to Nina. We have but a small family. But truly, our family is the first gift that we have been gifted by the Lord. And we must treasure that gift. And we must deepen our love for each other in the way that the Holy Family of Nazareth has shown that love. Let us take on the model of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, who truly loved one another. And despite the pain and the suffering and the sacrifice, they continued to love even beyond their own family. So let us try in the concrete, my dear brothers and sisters, as we leave for home tonight, try to pray that our love for our own family will grow each day. Second is for our household, our immediate family in the community of Corpus for Christ. We need not go very far. Just loving our household, if you are a chapter leader, I'm sure when our unit leaders feel the love that we have for them, they too will bring it down to their household heads and their household leaders will also share it with the rest of their members. And so again, we will be agents of transformation by simply focusing on the five, six, or seven families we have in our household and let us deepen that love for one another. Deepening our love for the people that come in contact with us every day in the office, in the school, in our social environment, let us try to find ways and means so that it is not just simply a transactional uh, relationship that we have with people that we encounter every day, but it is really a, re a relationship that is founded on love and care and sincere love, no, mga kapatid? And again, we need the grace of God for all of this. Then finally, the random people that we meet every day. You know, you know, the random people that we meet every day is Christ. Probably this guy is in that person. You know, one time, uh, we usually go to uh, daily morning mass in our parish. And just before consecration, I felt a tap on my left shoulder. And uh, when I looked, there was this little kid no, who was begging for for some arms, for food, no? And I, so I, I told the kid, later, later, when I go out, I will give you, no? So I made that promise, no? But after communion, coming back to my pew, when I was already reflecting, the Lord spoke to my heart by saying, you know, Roquel, last night you had a good meal. Then this morning, you had already coffee and some toast, breakfast ka na. But you know that kid that tapped you on the shoulder? He hasn't eaten since yesterday. No. And so, I go, Lord, what are you telling me? Well, I'm that kid, no? And, you know, I'm also present in, in the Eucharist. I'm present in the Blessed Sacrament. But I'm also present in that kid, no? And that kind of revolutionized my thinking about caring for people that come our way, no? that they need help now, no? not later. No? And some of them may even die no? if we don't extend the hand that we're supposed to do. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, again, it's maybe a little bit more sensitivity to what is around us and how we can also be of help to the brothers and sisters who need our love. And be assured, and as I was assured at that time, 
At even if I was disturbed, that was Christ I was ministering to if I gave that help right away. And then finally, a clearer witness to the gospel or an exemplary witness to the gospel. In our last International Council retreat sometime in, um, when was that? Early December last year, uh, our facilitator for the strategic imperative uh, facilitated our morning session uh, by outlining certain values or certain virtues no? that hopefully can characterize what a Corpus for Christ member ought to live out. No? And more or less we came out with this acronym, as we may call it, Love Christ. No? Love Christ. There's no acronym for love, but there's an acronym for Christ. No? And I hope maybe this can also give us some sort of guidance on how to cultivate this virtue in us so that we can be better Christians, better leaders of our community. The acronym Christ starts with C, compassion for others. And probably I need not expound on it much, but simply cultivate that compassion for others. C is humility in action. Humility is a very basis of our leadership, my dear brothers and sisters. Because if you don't exhibit humble leadership, then that is not the kind of leadership that we need to pursue in the community of Corpus for Christ. So, humility in action. R is respect for life. Respect for life in all its forms. Respect for life in the way that we also try to live out our calling here in the community of Corpus for Christ and being a Christian Catholic as well. I, so that we will be inspiring, so that our people will be inspired to do more, to commit more, to evangelize more. And the way to inspire them is to really witness that we are also inspired by the Holy Spirit and then we move ahead. S in Christ is a sense of purpose. The reason why we come to our meetings, the reason why we attend conferences like this, even if, oh, haba-haba naman, tatlong talks na yan, naubos na yung maghapon natin. But there is that sense of purpose in us because we want to hear the marching orders of the Lord and this sense of purpose will not only wake us up, but will really help us move ahead and make our families better and make our community better. And then, relationship is very important. The T is trustworthy relationship. My dear brothers and sisters, love Christ. A number of our themes in previous years carried the same theme as well. Just after our crisis in 2007, what was our theme? love one another. And just a few years ago, maybe a year or two ago, love more. No? Now, we're saying standing firm in the faith, but the final verse of our theme is also again love. So again, this is what the message of in the last session. Faithful love to the end, God will give that to us. We return it to Him, faithful love to our God, faithful love to one another. In conclusion, my dear brothers and sisters, what I have mentioned, or many of the things I have mentioned, comes from the human dimension. But there is another greater dimension than this. And it is the divine dimension centered on the Holy Spirit. I think the song that... Uh, our brother George uh, sang very well together with our Spanish brethren. No? The Holy Spirit has been the decisive factor in the history of Corpus for Christ from the very beginning. That's the reason why this book is entitled Moved by the Holy Spirit. This is just the first volume. There will be four or five more volumes to come before our 40th anniversary. But we 
must understand and realize and constantly remind ourselves that Corpus for Christ has been following the movement of the Holy Spirit and the way that we are able to really pursue this is when we really center ourselves on the Holy Spirit. And Archbishop Arguelles mentioned this earlier. Prayers, sacraments, that is what will keep us centered on the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, it can even penetrate the most secret recesses of the human heart and remove the obstacles of indifference and hatred. Mga kapatid, marami ang sa mundo ngayon yan. Indifference and hatred. Sometimes, the human heart has already grown numb. You know, sometimes when I watch the international news, I really cry. No? Kung di man physically in my heart. No? When I see what is happening in in Syria, in Iraq, in, in parts of Africa, in almost all continents, we see that there is that indifference, that hatred, that lack of sensitivity that is happening all around us. The Holy Spirit can even melt the glaciers of human prejudice and pride. Again, the downfall of many leaders, even spiritual leaders. The Holy Spirit can make bloom again the desert created in many of our contemporaries by destructive philosophies, painful personal experiences in human history, as well as the scandalous behaviors by community and church leaders. No? So kasama na rin tayo siguro dyan. Because we're not the perfect leader. We're not the perfect member. But when... We allow the Holy Spirit to reign in our heart, to reign in our family, to reign in our community, then these things can be set aside. Today, as we end this leaders' retreat, we continue to see empty spaces in our own life and in the life of the community. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to fill in that human emptiness so that all of us can aim for a higher goal. And what is that higher goal? Eternity. Heaven. And we ask and pray that Mary, our loving mother, lead us closer to her son Jesus that he may love as he says love. And in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, 35, it says, This is how all will know that you are my disciples by the love that you have one for another. My dear brothers and sisters, fellow disciples of the Lord, let us together embrace this faithful love that God has given to us and let the Holy Spirit instill in us the fire of His love so that we can truly set this world on fire. One final quotation from 1 Corinthians 13.13. 13. So faith, hope, love remain these three. But the greatest of these is love. Let us love one another that we will be known as the follower of our Lord Jesus Christ and truly He will reign in our hearts reign in our family, reign in our community, and in the mission that the Lord has given to us. May God be praised, my dear brothers and sisters.
Brothers and sisters, let's end this time of uh, thanksgiving and celebration by praying over our, the, the new leaders. So uh, maybe we can start calling them. May I call on the new 
newly appointed island coordinators by Rafael and uh, James Solano and uh, Steve Maningat. So, way of introducing. Next, we call on our new sector heads in Metro Manila. Jojo Solis, Louis Maglaya, Robert Labayan, and Nona Kaunga. We also call to the stage the missionaries that will be deploying this year. Please come up. We also call on our new Metro Manila Missions Director, Mike Bukuhan. Brother Mike. Okay, we'd also like to pray for all the other new leaders, but we cannot be accommodated on stage, so may I ask the new chapter heads everywhere. So please stand up, stay where you are, but please stand up. Okay, may I call on my brothers in the council to please join me as we will pray. Join me in the prayer. Please join me on stage, brothers in the council. Okay, just before we start the prayer, I have uh, just a con an announcement I wasn't able to cover during my talk. <laughs> Yung ating pluma, we have been blessed that we just signed the agreement that we will have a pluma too. And that will begin on Easter Sunday this year. And please watch out for this because uh, those that we will feature will include our brethren from the provinces and also from the international countries. Okay, so that's Easter Sunday. Okay, sorry for... Uh, yeah, it's a good thing I didn't, we didn't start. No? <laughs> we call on our brother Rudy Gaspillo, the newly appointed president of ANCOP. Okay, are the chapter heads, uh, new chapter heads already? Maybe even f some of the those in the lower box and upper box but anyway brothers and sisters every time we gather as leaders is truly a time for thanksgiving and a time for celebration and we'd like to end this gathering of leaders to pray for those of our brethren who have accepted new service positions and we would like to thank the Lord for their servants' hearts, open to new positions, open to new assignments, and all of us in the community, uh, will, we pray, will continue to have these servants' hearts that are open to the Lord's leading at any time. So today, this year, these are our brethren, have responded to the call for new service and our missionaries, including their babies, <laughs> who will be deployed to their mission areas uh, this year. Okay.
as I will lead you in the prayer, prayer over, may I request that we extend our hands to our leaders. Uh, maybe you can extend your hands to those who are near you. Yeah, let's, let's stand up. Let's come before the presence of our God. In the, name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's praise our God who's been so good to all of us all these years. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We glorify your name. You are our Lord and King. You are our Master. Holy are you. Worthy are you, God. Praise be to Jesus. Praise to your Lord. Glory and honor belongs to you. Lord Jesus, we know that you call leaders to serve you. We know that you prepare their hearts. And we know that your anointment goes. You don't only call the equipped, but you equip those that you call. So Lord, filled with thanksgiving in our hearts, the whole community now lifts up to you. Or all our new leaders, our missionaries to be deployed and we pray dear Lord that indeed we pray for the empowerment of your Holy Spirit upon all of them Lord where they may feel the lack and the insufficiency fill this up O oh Lord God with your power and with your might Lord Jesus we pray that you guide them bless them with wisdom and guide them in all the decisions and actions that they will make we pray also Lord that you bless them with strength fortitude so that any disappointment or frustration that sometimes come whenever we serve Lord, that this will not overwhelm them. That indeed, you will allow them to go through all possible disappointments and frustrations because you assure them that victory is always with you, O Lord God. We also pray for protection for them and for the respective families. We ask dear Lord that you protect them from the evil one protect them from all harm and danger O God and let them always rest in the mantle under the mantle of your protection we pray O God for your generosity and provision Lord you know the needs of each one as they respond to you O Lord God Please assure them that as they will take care of your call for them, that you will take care of their needs, O God. Their families. Lord, please do not allow any need, any lack of provision to stop them from serving you. Because you're a God who provides. And we have experienced this in so many ways. Once more, God, we lift them up to all of you for your provision and generosity. And we pray, Lord, that you fill them with love. Fill them with love that is overpowering over any obstacle. Bless them the ability, the capability to love as you love. Always sacrificing. But bless them also, oh God, with the joy, the satisfaction, the blessings that all of those who serve you will experience, oh God. Our Father in heaven, we know that you will look kindly 
upon all of your servants. Lord Jesus, our brother, please take care of all that they are going to experience. We pray for all of this. Ask for the Holy Spirit to accompany them wherever they go. Let's all sing or pray for them. Ask for the Holy Spirit to be upon them. The living God, we affirm your presence here. Spirit of the living God, we affirm your power. Fest, brothers and sisters. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Our God is a God of faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Our God is a God of faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Our God loves us more than we could ever imagine. And brothers and sisters, I truly felt the Holy Spirit in here tonight over these leaders. And I'm so excited for 2017. Are you excited for 2017? 
And God is going to continue to work in here tonight as we enter into worship. And we were very blessed and privileged to hear so many amazing talks, amen? So we heard in the first talk about standing firm in the faith. And in the second talk, we heard more about the deepening of our faith so that we may go on to evangelize. And in the third talk, we were reminded by the Rokel about the beauty of our community and the history, the love story of our community and the future plans of this community and how we need to remain in love in order to be sustained, amen? So we need to remain in that love. And that's what we're going to do tonight. Are you ready to remain and to be sustained in the love and in the power of God? Are you ready for that? We're going to do that tonight. But we, before we go, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is, my name is Brother Vince Bernardo, and I come from Austria, from Vienna, Austria. I was originally born here in the Philippines, in the UST hospital. So if anyone is from UST, I love you very much. And then when I was one years old, my parents brought me to the great state of Texas. And I was raised there in the United States. I went to high school there. I went to university there. And I started to work there. And so we fast forward into the future. I had everything I wanted as a young man. And in the United States, when you're a young man, let's face it, when you're a young man in the United States, you have many temptations to deal with. And I had a lot of temptations, and I struggled with a lot of sin. The sin of alcohol, drugs, sexual temptations. And I had all of that. And since my family came from a family of means, I did whatever I wanted to do. I did whatever I wanted to do. Like St. Francis of Assisi before his conversion, I was a young, reckless man. But I felt so empty inside. I felt so empty because I knew that I was not complete. And it wasn't until I was invited to go onto a spiritual retreat that I experienced the love and the power of God. I remember the day, brothers and sisters. It was November 15th, 2000, where I saw our Lord, where I experienced the sacrifice that He made for me when I experienced the vision of Him on the cross, nailed to the tree, and I fell to my knees and I said, My Lord and my God, I have no idea who you are. I do not know you, but I say yes to you, and I say yes to your plan in my life. And from that moment on, the Lord has taken me on adventures that I can't even explain. He's taken me all over the world. And in the year 2008, the Lord brought me to a crossroad. He said, Vince, I'm giving you a choice to either stay here in the United States or to go to Europe, to go to Vienna. And I said, Lord, I don't know anyone in Europe. I don't know anyone in Vienna. But I really felt that the Lord was saying, did I not show you my faithfulness throughout these years? Do you not trust me now? And I said, yes, Lord, I trust in your faithfulness. And I say yes to you. I will go to Vienna. And it was there where I found the greatest treasure that the Lord has given me. Would you like to meet my greatest treasure? Would you like to meet the greatest thing that the Lord has blessed me with in this earthly life? I'd like to bring them up right now. This is my family. When I moved to Vienna and I said yes to the Lord's plan in my life and yes to His faithfulness, I met my wife and my mother and my father. I don't like to call them mother and father-in-law because I really see them as my, my real mother and father as well. And then we had our two beautiful children, Elijah and Gabriella. And this family was already active in CFC. And it was actually through them that I joined the community. I entered into SFC. And then a year later, Kai and I were married here in the Philippines. And we became couples for Christ. And Mama and Papa were already serving. So they decided to put us into leadership. So from the very beginning of our marriage, we've been serving the Lord in this beautiful community. And I don't regret a single day.
And so I invite you guys right now that just to remember that the heart of our community, the heart of our community, and it's beautiful that we do all of this evangelization, it's beautiful that we do all of this outreach and missions, but the heart of our community is right here. This is our heart. My wife and our family right here, this is the heart of CFC. Families in the Holy Spirit renewing the face of the earth. So I'm going to ask you tonight, if you're with your family, if you're with your wife or your husband or your mother or your father or your children, and if you don't have a, a husband or wife, I'm looking at all the SFCs over there, I invite you at this moment to just to pray for your family at this moment. As we sing one more time, we're going to sing Spirit of the Living God one more time. And we're just going to pray in the Holy Spirit for the for the Holy Spirit to come upon all of our families and to renew them in the Holy Spirit so we may go out and change this world and bring this world back into the kingdom of God. Let's do it one more time. So let's just come together in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. We're going to call down the Holy Spirit right now. Come Holy Spirit with your fire. Come with your awesome power, Lord God. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Glory. of the Lord speaking to us. So let's sing the song together right now, but in a little while, we're going to try to listen to what God's plan is for us, and for our families, and for our community. But right now, let's sing together. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
for giving us this venue, for allowing us to come here to learn more about your faithfulness, to teach us more, Lord, about standing firm in the faith and enduring in love, Lord God. Brothers and sisters, at this moment, we're going to invite the entire community here to enter into a period, into a period of listening, into a period of hearing the word of the Lord, to hearing the Lord's voice in our lives and in our hearts. So I'm going to invite you, just like Bartimaeus in Mark's gospel, he comes to the Lord wanting to see. He comes to the Lord blind. We come to you too right now, Lord God. And you ask us, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, we want to hear your plan in our lives. We want to hear your plan in our lives for our marriages, your plan in our lives for our families, for our children, your plan in our lives for our studies, your plan in our lives for our vocations, for what we're called to be. We want to know, Lord, what you want from us because we say yes to you, Lord God. So we're going to sing one more time with just the instrumentals, with the band, and with the vocals. We're going to sing hallelujah one more time. And then we're going to enter into a period where we listen to you, Lord God. We're in the silence. We hear your voice. So let's sing one more time. so much for speaking to us thank you Lord for, for reminding us Lord what your plan is for us thank you Jesus and we ask you Jesus to, to cover this whole room with your spirit cover the room this entire arena with your precious blood protect us Lord Fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit. Give us the power, Lord God, to go out into all the world, but most of all, into our families, into our marriages, and to be renewed and to proclaim the gospel. We beg this of you, Lord God. We ask this of you. We believe, Lord God, that you hear our prayer right now. We love you so much, Lord God.
Lord God, we, we are so happy. We are so excited for your plan in our lives. Are you excited for God's plan in your lives? Brothers and sisters, in order for us to receive the blessing, in order for us to hear the plan and to carry it out, we have to respond in faith. So let me hear you say, I believe. I believe. I believe. Our God hears us, and our God is victory. Our God is a victorious God, and He is our King. Let us sing to Him. Oh, glory unto Him, this battle that we sing. to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it, was it was in the, the beginning, beginning, is now and ever, and ever shall, shall be, world, world without end. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. Now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen.
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Vince Granado from CFC Vienna, Austria. Thank you to all our speakers, sharers, and service team, to our counterparts, to our suppliers. Thank you, all of Asia. God is good. And all the time, God is good. See you in Baguio next weekend. God bless us all. Watch this infomercials. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Cap Porticos, for your.